It's time for Mac Break Weekly, and boy, is there a lot of news today. New Macs, new, <laughs> new operating system, and yes, even an Apple earnings call to talk about. Mac OS Ken joins the crew next on Mac Break Weekly. Netcasts you love from people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for MacBreak Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is MacBreak Weekly, episode 256, recorded July 20th, 2011. Lionized. MacBreak Weekly is brought to you by GoToMeeting, the easiest, most reliable online meeting service. For your free 30 day trial, visit GoToMeeting.com and use the offer code. Mac break. And by audible.com. To download the free audiobook of your choice, visit audible.com slash MacBreak. And by Gazelle, the easy way to sell or recycle the used gadgets lying around your home or office. Don't just sell it, gazelle it. For a 5% bonus payment for your used gadgets, go to gazelle.com, put your box together, then use the offer code TWIT. It's time for Mac Break Weekly, the show that covers everything there is to know about Macintosh. And boy, <laughs> today there's a lot to know about Macintosh. We've got the Apple earnings call. We've got a new operating system. Uh, we've got new hardware. And uh, we've got a great panel to talk about it all, starting with Mr. Andy Anatko from Boston, our, our, our regular uh, guy here. Hey, Andy. Can't talk writing. <laughs> yeah, I bet you are. <laughs> now you've had Lion for a while, so you're not on a. You know, you've you've been able to work on this, right? Yeah, yeah. I've, unfortunately, I yeah. <laughs> but, but it's it's only when like I had to spend this morning like waiting in, waiting in line to download it and then downloading because what I had was of course the developer edition and I didn't know for sure I didn't know for sure that what the regular installation process that makes would sense. be. That, makes that sense. then leads to the stupid thing of saying, well, let's reread the entire review and make oh and oh now that, now, now that we know. Oh, what happened? Nothing. Okay. <laughs> I'm just I'm I'm a commiserating. Oh yes, so yes, and so well, also because now like uh, uh, things I was trying to f f uh, shag down for the past three weeks, like you're sure that you're not going to be selling this on a flash, not even on a flash drive. You're sure? So I'm going through the list of questions that I reckon that might be answerable and on the fact, day of release, but not before. In fact, they're gonna. But before yep. we go too much farther down that road, let's say hello to a new. A uh, member of our panel. Really glad to have him, Mr. OS Ken, Ken Ray, my old friend from Tech TV. Hey, Ken Ray. Hey, Leo. How's it going? Mac OS Ken. Yes. Uh, yes, I'm keeping the Mac. You I are. You're Apple, not going to give it Apple's up. Apple's dropping it. Nah, because that. You're not going to be Lion OS Ken? Probably not. <laughs> I might change my. I can't. There's OS 10 Ken kind of has a certain sound to it. That gets a little too rhymy, though, doesn't it? Okay. Uh, for me, anyway. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to keep the Mac part because why not? Why not? And then when they go to 11, I'm, I'm probably still going to be OS 10. You're so stuck there. with it forever, the rest of your life. <laughs> right. Well, Don, it's been a few years. Don McAllister also joining us from the other side of the pond. Indeed, yes. The screencast Hello, online. It's been a really long day for me. It's. Uh, Did you get up uh, with the, the, the birds to get a uh, lion? No, or? not really, but it's sort of, um, there was lots and lots, of course, being uh are we ahead or behind you here? We're ahead of you, aren't we? So, no, uh, there's been lots of speculation this morning when it would actually come out. It actually came around about, out around about lunchtime, which is probably about uh, six or seven hours ago now. Yeah, um, I think so uh, I got up at, uh, I, I looked at midnight last night just to see, nothing. And I got up at 6 a.m., there it was, uh -huh. downloaded it immediately. And one of the first things I do, uh, did, of course, was install it on my Air. And I, th I, was, I was all set to make a, a USB key because we know how to make a USB key out of it. And uh, then I thought, oh, no, I'll just do it after I install. And son of a bitch if it didn't delete the install file. <laughs> yes, you have to stop at that point and then copy it, make a copy and then so carry on. Lesson otherwise. number one, if you don't want to download this 5 gig file 800 times, <laughs> and it's completely legal apparently to install it on every, uh, every Mac you've got, uh, what you should do is stop before you say okay 
and then extract the uh, you open package contents and you go into what is it res uh, something resources yeah there's a folder in there resources i'm going to do a video uh, same as andy i've had it for a while now but i've been sort of hanging on and hanging on until i actually did the final right. release version just in case they changed a it tweak or a change or, or something yeah so they but didn't. it looks as though they didn't it's the same, and then you, you know? could drag that to uh, that dmg file to uh, disk utility i mm -hmm. burned it onto a usb key and in fact as part of the fun today I've got my Mac OS X install ESD. That's the name of the file, and I and I made a, made a boot key out of it. I am going to restart and install Lion as we talk. <laughs> this is the only way to do a clean install, though. All I have to say on my Air anyway, which is a late, you know a October Air running Snow Leopard, it was very painless and smooth and easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's 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 almost disconcerting the, the 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 how few questions it asks you while you're installing. It's like do you agree to the, the license terms? Yeah. Okay. There's well, no uh, <laughs> there's no options. There's no customization. You can't take out languages. You can't do a clean install. Or it's, it's just boom. Yep. Now John Syracuse in his excellent uh, article on Ars Technica talks about what happens. And apparently a uh, a new partition is actually created on your drive that won't go away. It's around a 600 megabyte partition, CD size partition, that will hold a rescue version of this file. Is that right, Andy? Yeah, absolutely. That's uh, one of the coolest features are is, is the fact that there's a standard OS level partition uh, that has recovery tools in it. So if you have a problem with your hard drive and it's not mechanical, if it has to do with your regular boot system, just hold down the option key to get the standard like uh, volume picker or command R to uh, boot into the rescue picker. Excuse me, the the rescue volume, and you will have essentially a boot seat, a rescue boot DVD uh, that you'll boot into. And the cool thing is it also includes Safari. Uh, so worst comes to worst, you can hit you can hit the internet to look for diagnostic problems, or it's a Chromebook. <laughs> only only look, you can actually do stuff with it, and it's cool. Mind you, there is a really neat thing as well, which we didn't know about until today, which is the ability now, because a lot of people are saying, well, the recovery disk is a great idea, but it's on the same hard drive as your main hard drive. So, right. you know, if your drive just completely crashes out or, or burns, you know, you, you, you're stuck. But you can actually, on, on, the, on the new Macs they're bringing out from today, you can actually bootstrap using the EFI to Apple oh. servers and actually restore your machine from an Apple server. Oh, that's really cool. You start the process off, and then you know you have to obviously you have to be either have a wide internet connection or a Wi-Fi access point locally. But once you boot to this um, this new service, you can then recover your machine without even if your physical disk has been wiped out and you haven't got your recovery partition and you haven't got a, a flash driver. So that's pretty neat. So as of so, now, the, the only way to get this is to go. You have to be running Snow Leopard. You have to go to the App Store. You have to pay thirty dollars, and it is a upgrade in place, and that's that. Boom. But they say they will sell a sixty dollar USB key, kind of like the key that comes with the Air, I presume. Um, you can bring it to the Apple Store if you want some help or you want to do something different, and you can do this undocumented and I presume unsupported technique of uh, burning a CD, a DVD. I guess it'd have to be a DVD or a USB key. You need about four gigs uh, for this. So I'm booting now to the USB key. And uh, we'll actually walk through the install process. I want to do a clean install. I think this is the only way I could do this, right? Yeah. Yes. It's interesting that they, uh, they're they so sure of themselves that they don't give that as an, even an option. Mm. Say, I, mean, I have to say, though, the, 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 the couple of installs I've done where it's not been a clean install, I've had really few problems. Very, very few problems. I haven't seen anything at all. I mean, except yeah. for... Scrolling completely confusing me. Everything else is yeah. fine. You see, that's that, that's that's something that's that's something interesting. Where you know that Apple has been in the middle of an internal struggle about that scrolling direction, where that now it scrolls the way an iPad scrolls, not the way that you're used to scrolling with a trackpad, and that really screws you up. You can tell the amount of fighting that must have been happening inside of Cupertino that by the fact that the only the, the first thing that the Lion does when it when it first boots up for the first time is present you with this window that says, "Oh, by the way, we changed the way that we." We did scrolling now don't freak out just give it a chance here's here's an animation of the fingers doing the scrolling just do that and you'll be fine uh and the, but the, there is a way to turn that off that's good but I, I i like to think that some manager somewhere could not avoid just giving people a little bit of a kick in the teeth because they refer to the line default way of scrolling as natural mode so if you don't want to do that you want to scroll in an unnatural fashion See, I gotta say, I haven't had a chance yet. I haven't, I haven't downloaded Lion. After this, I'm gonna download Lion so I can talk about it on my live show that I do tonight. I'm really excited about that because it feels like that's sort of the future 
But it feels like the future. It feels like the capital F future, which I know sounds stupid because we're talking about something as tiny as scrolling. And I fully expect to be completely frustrated when I use it. But it really is, I mean, it's the whole manipulation of the data thing that Jobs talked about when, when he first introduced the iPad, right? Right. Well, so it's in, in, in a larger sense, it's, and, and there's many, many more other bits of this, including under the hood bits of this, it's the yeah. iOSification of the desktop operating system. It is, it is very clear now. I don't think I don't think it's it's fair to say that the iOS is driving the desktop, but but it sure is. There's a lot of cross pollinization, and after using it for just a few hours today, at first my first reaction was you just spent 27 years teaching us how to scroll this way, <laughs> and yeah. now you're telling me I have to scroll this way. For people who haven't tried it yet, it's exactly the opposite direction that you're used to scrolling. Uh, because on a tablet, it's direct drive. It makes sense. You move like this to go up, and you move like that to go down. But on a mouse wheel, it makes no sense at all. It's exact opposite. On a touchpad, it kind of makes sense. On a trackpad, it makes sense. If you're using a magic mouse, it makes sense because you're, you know, you're going. <laughs> so it's only really on these old scroll wheel, which Apple, to their in their defense, never even sold, but many <laughs> of us use that. It, that it's a little confusing. But I got used to it. Um, but but, but I mean, there's so much more. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Yes. yes I'm sorry. I, I, I just... Go ahead, Ken. Hey, well, no, it's stupid how excited I get by it. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I, because I don't think of it as the iOSification of the desktop. I think of it as this is how we're going to play with our data when we're able to, like they do in Minority Report, except without right. the little you know, flash drive thing. I like when that contextualization. It's direct drive of the you. data. Exactly. When yeah. we're able, when we're able to toss it to the wall, or when we're able to toss it to the table, like I mean, like you can with a piece of paper, you move a piece of paper across the table with your hands the same way you're going to be moving with this. And don't misunderstand me. I'm sure I'm going to hate it. I'm sure I'm going to be really frustrated when I first get it. But it's exciting to see. I hate it less than I possibilities of it. I hate it less than I thought I would. I mean, I have to say, I I have um, a few problems with the scrolling um, because I do like it, which is a strange thing to say. But the problem I have is that on my desk machine, I, I've been using a Wacom pen tablet for for the longest time now. I actually use this instead of a mouse. And that's what Ken was saying. That's direct. Drive, yeah, and, right? and that's great. So I can actually sort of grab something and pull it down. So if I'm sort of scrolling a column, I can pull it down. But with now with the reverse scrolling in in Lion, uh, it's reversed. So my pen works the wrong way round. So I can either have the trackpad <laughs> working and not the pen working, or the pen working fine and the trackpad's the wrong way round. So I'm hoping that Wacom will actually bring out a driver that you can enable your pen to be in. I'm not sure if they could actually do that, though, but uh, it's causing me a few problems at the minute because it really is useful having a trackpad um, because there's so many gestures in line. Now, I agree. You know, between I agree. The, the full yeah. screen, et cetera. But uh, it is causing me some complications with using a, a pen tablet with it at the same time. And I should say, I was using an Air, and it, because the Air has a large trackpad and does all those, has always done those gestures, it's very natural on the Air, not mm -hmm. the new Air, the old Air. Uh, and of course, as, as the chat room is yelling at me saying, you can turn this off, yeah, but sure. I think Ken's saying you shouldn't. You should, you should, yeah. you should get used to it. Persevere. <laughs> Persevere. Well, yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's probably a good idea because if you're going to be switching between multiple machines, it's yeah. best to learn how to the default mode works or else you're going to be driving yourself crazy every time going and switching that back the way it is. Uh, I'm slowly, I'm not liking it more, I'm hating it less, but I'm getting used to it. Uh, <laughs> the, the bigger disappointment for me, though, is that, the, that one of the big bullet point items in bringing you know, features back to the Mac from the iPad is making sure that there's just like chock full of nougaty, multi-touch goodness and just about everything that you do. And it is kind of cool to be able to switch apps just by putting the right number of fingers down and swooshing. It is cool to put a different number of fingers down in in the in the browser and you doing that to go back and forth between pages uh and it's i like my ipad i like the way that works but the problem is though all those things require me to take my hand if i'm on the if i'm on my notebook it requires me to take my hands off the keyboard and move it to something else to make that happen mm -hmm. and there are really cool keyboard shortcuts for all of these things so i'm wondering how much saturation they're going to get with it because oh, that's interesting new, New new users aren't going to, when they, uh, they're not going to instinctively think, oh, if I put four fingers down this way and swoosh it that way, I'll get the application launcher. Yes. They're going to be, they want to look for that dingus in the dock that says, oh, 
here is the, here is the tool for uh, uh, for the launch pad, and here's how I activate that. Power users are going to be thinking, well, actually, why would I even bother to use that gesture where I can hit Command Tab and see a list of all my running apps and then switch from it that way. So I've been using it for two or three weeks, and I really few of these gestures have really caught on with me. I don't know if I'm different than anybody else, but it is a factor. I don't I don't think that was thought out as well as it might have been. Well, there's a, a number of things, and even John Syracuse uh, in his extensive review, which is mostly positive, does talk about those. We're going to talk about that in a second. One of the things he doesn't like is linen. There's a lot of it. This is the new linen texture, which you'll see kind of everywhere. I have made a boot key. Uh, I created a boot key getting the uh, install ESD DMG file out of the uh, contents, the package contents. When you boot to it, this is the uh, interface you get. You get uh, four choices. You can restore from a time machine backup, reinstall OS X. That's a clean install, by the way. Get help on liner disk utility. So I guess for the rest of this show, I'm going to be on this machine uh, installing Lion. You can start the clock now. It's 11.32, and there's the picture you're going to get. You ready, kids? Here we go. And we'll continue our conversation at 11.32.56 mark. No, crap. Agree. Oh, crap. Agree. Oh, okay. yes, I'm going to install it on this machine. Yes. Okay. Now start the clock. Eleven <laughs> thirty-three, <laughs> and I'm installing it on that machine. A lot of UI changes. A lot of little uh, little things like the scroll bar changes too. You can now drag and resize windows from all directions. Even the little, uh, all the all the widgets have changed slightly, in an interesting way. Uh, but it's the under the hood changes that Syracuse points out that I think are are really significant. For instance, applications don't really quit anymore. Yeah. It's much like iOS in the sense that I guess in a way uh, it's not this is this part's not about users. It's it's a new way of thinking of what an operating system is and I kind of like the new document model and the new application model. Andy, can you describe uh yep. what I'm saying when I say they don't quit anymore? There, there are a couple of different things that sort of work together in a very subtle way. Um, one of the things that uh, Line takes away from iOS is the idea that you don't necessarily quit an app. You just sort of freeze it in place and then out reallocate its system resources because you don't need them right now. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that if, I've, if I'm in text edit, which is right now the best text editor that is up optimized for Lion, if I've got nine windows open and I've selected some text in one window, some text in another, another window, I don't have to, if, I'm, if I need to quit out of uh, text edit, I don't have to save every one of these windows windows and reopen them later on. I just quit text edit. Then when I open it again, this is it's restored exactly to the state that it was before. Not only are the same documents open, but they're also scrolled to the exact same space. Uh, they're, they're scrolled to the exact same space. Any text that was highlighted is still highlighted. And because it does this version control, it's automatically saved all of these documents. So I, it didn't have to go to that really horrible waltz we are, we've been going through for the past five years, ten years with Mac OS X, where you want to just quit, but it has to show you every one of these open files just because you changed a comma somewhere. There's unsaved changes. Do you want to review those before? No, please. I just want to <laughs> shut down and leave. Um, now, this but, is actually the, this, this is starting to make makes sense to me. It is also IS iOSification, but the, but I think this is um, also a modern operating system. Yeah, I mean, there, there are a couple of, we'll, we'll get, we can get to versions uh, a little bit later, but... Well, versions is great, but we, yeah, let's say, we'll hold off on that. Okay. One, one of the things that really occurred to me is that I think that Apple is taking the first really visible step in making files and folders and directories into an abstract concept and trying to hide mm -hmm. those from user whenever possible. Mm -hmm. You can see these in like so many different places. Like there's now a new Finder view that just simply <laughs> simply a button says all my files, and you're like, well, surely it doesn't mean show all my files in one window, but yes, it does. You <laughs> click this button, it will put every file you've got on your 500 <laughs> gigabyte hard drive in one window. But the thing, but the cool thing is, it makes it totally abstract. It doesn't show you. And now if you drill down into your pictures folder inside your photos folder inside your vacation folder now we'll just give you piles and it'll, it'll just uh, or break all the files that spotlight has indexed by group and by type and so it makes it very very easy to get it doesn't really make a difference that uh, there's a picture that you you're in a rush you didn't realize that you saved it to the desktop instead of the pictures folder you might not find it if you forgot what the name
name was by looking in the pictures folder. But if you just look in all my files, there it is. And it's actually very, very fast the way it does it. Uh, also, the way that it, it's uh, use, it's uh, organizing applications in the launch pad, again, it's trying to get you to forget where what directory these applications are actually in and just think of them as the resource that you're using. Uh, I could make it sound like it's more ambitious than it actually is, but I think it's significant that Apple's doing so many things to sort of make you make you remember that it's no longer really necessary for you to know exactly where a file is so long as the operating system can give it to you when you need it. And of course, this is a precursor to iCloud as well. I mean, we saw this with uh, right. WWDC with iPad, you know, and then suddenly the penny dropped. This is why the, 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 the file management on the iPad was so poor and, and why we had so many problems getting files in and out in the iCloud wasn't ready. Now, we now see what the, the grand design is for iCloud with iPad. I think we still yet to see it for Lion, but as Andy says, these sorts of technologies and these ways of handling files are very much indication, I think, on, on the direction that Apple are taking with iCloud. So, by the way, this is happening very quickly, but I think that the reinstall is is, uh, is almost over. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think for a clean install, it doesn't take very long, maybe eight or nine minutes. This is. No, I had I had somebody on Twitter tell me that um, an upgrade or, or a not a clean install uh, took them about twenty minutes, which was yeah. stunning. Yeah, everything happens much faster than than, than you'd think. Uh, except for the download, that takes for <laughs> that takes forever, <laughs> which is why I burned it on a key. Uh, it does look like though, if you do that, what I, that you don't have the option to upgrade. That you're going to do a clean install. It looks as far as I can tell, I didn't see a upgrade in place. It's clean install when you when you boot from a a key like this, which is fine on this machine. We'll see. Um, so you have kind of a time machine like versioning system as well, which I think is now again this requires a, an app be written to use this feature. Uh, of course, all of Apple's apps uh, will. Um, same thing with full screen, although I noticed Chrome uh, is already ready to go with the uh, full screen button, which is great. I, I didn't think I would like the full screen. This is another iOS feature. Uh, and I really kind of do. When I'm reading a browser page, uh, when I was reading John's article, Syracuse's article, for instance, full screen on Chrome, and it was just very natural. Even, this, even the fingers with the scrolling... <laughs> Uh, on again on an air on a small factor system, it made a lot of sense. Yeah. And it's, it's not just the idea that it expands to full screen, even though that's as, that's uh, in itself is a great feature. I mean, it, it's a great for distraction-free working and maximizing small displays and big displays. The and dock goes display. away. The menu goes away. Right, everything goes away. But also that uh, a well-written app will also go into a whole different manner of thinking. I love the fact that uh, when you're in the mail app, another app that I really really like, I think is a big yes. We'll get update. to that in a second because it so is you, it, ch it shocked me. It changed so much. Yeah. So if, if you're in regular mode, you hit, you hit reply to a, you want to reply to a message, you get the usual thing where it opens up a new window, and okay, now you're, now you're dealing with that. In full screen mode, though, it does this really cool little camera move where it sort of dims the lights on your inbox and puts a spotlight on this brand new document that you've put that's uh, front and center inside the screen, and so you're just focusing on on uh, taking on writing this email, and then when you click send, it window shades up. The background now fades back up again, and now you're back into the task you were looking at. So it, looking initially, might be a little all these different takes. Initially, it might be a little confusing because when you go full screen, there's there's nothing, and it doesn't seem like you can escape or anything. But you have to move your mouse up to the top, and then the menu comes back. Because yeah. the first few times, it's going to confuse people uh, a little bit, I think. But I think in the long run, uh, great. Now they're telling me that this is not an upgrade, and in, in, that this is an upgrade in place. We shall see because I didn't format, but I, I, the the language it told me uh, sounded like uh, it was going to rewrite the whole drive. So we'll see. Didn't didn't give me a big warning about you. Sure, you want to erase all your data? So maybe it, maybe it will will keep keep me in place. Um, I know we're jumping around a lot, but uh, we only have you know an hour and a half, and you could probably take ten days to talk about all the new features uh, of Lion. Let's talk about the versioning. A little bit. It's using a time machine uh, interface. Mm -hmm. So, if, so instead of now on the on, again apps that are designed for Lion, instead of saying save as or save, it says save a version, and right below that is a duplicate command. Explain that to me, Andy. What's going on? Uh, it now instead of just instead of just saving one final state of the document and replacing it every time you do a save, it's actually saving the process of putting the document in that state. Uh, there are a bunch of circumstances under which a, a Lion app will automatically save a new snapshot of the document you're working on. Every time you open a document, it creates a new snapshot of what it was like when you when you reopened it. Uh, once every hour, it will it will take a new snapshot. 
also whenever lion detects that you've made a significant change to it it will take another snapshot so that means that if you are in the middle of like hour three of writing this thing and you realize that ah dang it this whole i, I shouldn't have deleted that whole section i actually i actually need to go back to that it's possible to uh, open up a time machine so there's a, the revert feature that uh, you're familiar with in the file menu is now actually sort of a document based time machine where on the left hand side of the screen you'll see the document as it is the version of the document you have right now on the right hand side of the screen you will see a time machine like progression of all the different versions that got saved so you can rewind uh, and replace the current version with a version that you saved uh, that was saved about you know about about an hour ago or you can just review what this what what was like what this document was like 2 hours ago just to take that paragraph that you deleted and just put it back in this new document and then say, okay, that's what I wanted to do. Please take me back to the future and, and just uh, uh, with that one change that I made uh, to the current version of the document. So it, in, in my case, for instance, not only is it good for, for boo-boos and not only does it protect you from not having saved your changes, but also, uh, you could use it for uh, I for for almost every column that I write for the Sun Times, I write a long version of it that is that goes onto the web. But then I have to do like a 500 to 800 word version that's for the print edition. And usually I have to do that by writing one edition and then saving that and then creating you know creating a duplicate of that, creating a brand new document and then rewriting it and cut and pasting it all over again to make the shorter version. With this version control, I can just simply make sure that after I finish the web version, I just save a snap. Make sure I explicitly save a snapshot of it if I don't want it. I don't want to trust the system. I can do that explicitly. And then I can then simply cut this 4,000 word thing down to 750 words, knowing that the file that I've got on my desktop there contains every edition of the, this document that ever existed. Mm -hmm. So if I want to get back to that 3,000 word version, all I have to do is just rewind to the 3,000 word version. And I've got it. And I can just make a duplicate of it uh, or do whatever I want. You never lose any version because even if you revert to an older version, the the, the more recent version gets saved as another version. That's, that's, that's part of the whole history. And, and I think that this is going to be a lifesaver for normal people, and I think geeks will get it's, used to it. I think this is how it should be. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's such a far-ranging feature too, because when you think about what Apple wants to do with iCloud, where they want to make in, in the the word processor that hopefully you'll be using in September or October, it will not only be studly for Lime, but it'll also be studly for iCloud. Where it's, as I'm writing this review, go ahead. As I'm writing this review, I can say I want to share this with I want to share this with every single copy of this word processor that I use. Now instead of having to update this, you know, uh, this 200k file to a, a million different machines, all it has to do is every time a new version is created, I'll send maybe 8k worth of text. Oh, by the way, he changed this line to this line, or he added this paragraph ah, right here. Right, so it's much really faster. Stuff. Yeah. yeah. Is there a gotcha though until we get iCloud in that um, I think it does actually need Time Machine. Oh, so that's interesting. You mean if you're yeah. if I'm not using Time Machine, which I'm not, I don't think versions were. I, correct me if I'm wrong, Andy, but in my limited testing, because there hasn't been that many applications that we can test it with. Let me let honest. me check. I've, I, I, I might have to turn on Time Machine. That's a good I reason to turn on Time Machine. Let me mm. check. I don't believe I have Time Machine turned on here. <laughs> it's interesting that neither you nor I, nor nor, nor Don nope. use. Can you <laughs> use Time Machine? Does anybody uh, use Time yep, Machine? Yep. You don't need it. I've got I've got okay. Time Machine turned oh, off right. here. Okay. And, I, uh, I did do a fresh install and it did complain okay. that it couldn't find a Time Machine volume the first time I tried versions, but uh, I tried it today and it seemed okay. Okay, so now I know we rebooted and now I know what that stick was doing. It was creating that 600 megabyte partition, copying the rescue files over to it because now it says installing OS 10 on the disk Twit Studio, time remaining 33 minutes. So what okay. it was doing, this is actually very analogous to what Windows 7 now does, which is it copies files onto the drive and then installs from those files. It's using an image uh, system. I imagine Apple's also using an image system where it just blasts this stuff on. It's much faster than a direct copy. Can I ask a question that I, I'll be able to answer for myself later, but I want to know right now? I like it, Ken, that you're, you have not installed it. So you, you can be uh, the person listening at home who says, what the hell? Well, I, I am that person yes. right now. <laughs> what the uh, hell? <laughs> as far as versions goes, I mean, is there ever a point where you can get rid of the other versions? Because you were saying, you know, you can hold on to them forever. Can I at some point just put the stamp down and say, okay, can the rest of this, I just want this one that I finish now? Yeah, there, there are two different things you can do for privacy. One, when you go into that time machine view, you can delete previous versions so that they, they no longer exist. Uh, what most people are more concerned about is if I send this to my editor, is my editor going to see just what a pig's ear I made out of this <laughs> while I was screwing around for the first five hours? Uh, but every time, and I haven't had a chance to really experiment with this, but every time that you export this file, either save it into a different format or use some mail or something else to share this file with somebody else, it essentially 
does a save as and burns it down into just the current version, the, the latest version. So no one will be able to see the previous history of it uh, unless you explicitly. I, I think I haven't. I, I'm running it mouth here. I, I don't, I'm, I'm trying to. I was trying. No, one of my, the answer is no. <laughs> one, one, of the last, one of the last things on my punch list was under what circumstance can you give somebody this file with all the versions? Oh, can you? Have? I wonder. Can you bundle the versions up? I'm, I'm sure that if you zip it. Yeah. That would sort of prevent any voodoo from happening to it later on. The What Apple says explicitly and what I've been able to figure out just by emailing files back and forth is that as soon as you leave sort of the domain of your uh, of your machine, uh, it uh, all the different versions of it go away and it becomes just a standard Word file, which is which when you think about it is what would that have makes to sense. happen. Otherwise, you know, yeah. people in their yeah. little netbooks with Windows wouldn't be able to open it. Now, now some things are going are to confuse people. First of all, not all apps will support this. And so you're going to be in a weird for a while hybrid world where some apps are you have to continue to do this save, save, save or save as uh, some apps just do it for you automatically. That's going to be confusing because you got to pay attention to what app is doing what. Um, I, I think that people also need to understand some of the other advantages of this. You touched on it a little bit, Andy. Apps can share files with other apps even while you're working in them. So if another app wants to look at this file, for instance, let's say you're working on a word processing document, but you want to email it, you can. The email application will say to the word processor, save the most recent state, I'm going to use that. Uh, so these, f it's it's actually exactly how a user I think wants a user doesn't want to, doesn't want to know about a file being busy or locked or anything like that. This none of that happens anymore. And then after two weeks of inactivity, an application gets kind of locked down, so that changes don't get made, versions don't get kept. It's a very it, what's happening all across the board behind the scenes is a lot of automatic operating system activities, which initially might disconcert people because this stuff happens without anybody explicitly telling you but I think makes sense to the novice and you know I think those of us who are paying attention will figure it out and it'll make sense to us but there's gonna be this period of time where it's not something's happening here and I'm not sure what it is or if it's happening with all my apps which it won't be yeah but the first time someone actually thinks oh oh where's that version of that document gone and then goes into it the first time and actually sees all these different versions they'll probably go wow wow That's and it's in a time machine uh, interface which i think is very mm -hmm. is very intriguing or, or, or the first time that someone uh, uh, when your, your kid you know needs a place to to plug in the charger for his phone and unplugs your imac while you're in the middle of working something and you plug it back in and it just restarts exactly to that. where everything was before and everything has automatically been saved you're like i'm going to kill that kid but first i'm going to write a lovely letter to my local <laughs> thank, person. thank you steve jobs here's the versioning interface from john syracuse's article his 20 Seven thousand word article, which, by the way, Ars Technica is not only offering for free on their website, but you can buy an ebook or a PDF of it, which I think is a really nice idea because it is a book. Um, so here's the versioning, as you can see, in Final Draft, which apparently supports it, and you can go to the current document, go back in time, and we've now verified that's without the time machine running, and but it is a time machine interface uh, to all of that. I think that's great. You can also, uh, that's what the duplicate command does, is now saves another, like, this is the version, I want to preserve this version, and yeah. keep working. I mean, it's some very interesting you, new you ways of lot, working. You do have a lot of control over the, over this, and I think you're right that there are going to be some some people who are going to have to adapt to it. But among those features is the ability to lock this version to say that, look, I don't want to be messing around right. with this anymore, so here it is. Right. And, and then it says lock documents uh, two weeks after uh, last edit, which means that you basically, this document... Uh, then can't be accidentally changed. I think there's going to be huge pressure on developers to lionize their programs quickly. Yeah. Do we know it's, how many uh, developers are, are doing that? How uh, It seems like I've seen a number of lion versions come across the App Store. You're going to want to use the App Store, too, by the way. Yeah, uh, I've seen quite a few now. Um, I think that to... will be a requirement of all apps yeah. in the App Store, I would guess. Yeah, I, w I would think when people start to see apps that don't have the full screen mode, they'll think, "Well, oh, that's a that's an old app." I wonder, right. you know, uh, yeah. I think it, developers will actually strive to get them lionized so that they can they look modern and they look part of the operating system. Yeah, just like a car a car designer can keep putting tail fins on a car, but that will really broadcast to the world that wow, you really are. <laughs> <laughs> and again, just to reiterate, and and uh, Syracuse points this out that when you look at the dock. Uh, there's no more of those little lights on the dock saying which applications are running because it's meaningless to say that an application is running nowadays. Actually, there are. Yeah. You could turn it on if you want. Yeah. 
But I think uh, it used to be switched off, but used to be able to switch it on by default. But I think it's the other way it's around. The other way. So they I are think it's on switched by off now. by default. They they are on or off by default. I think they're on by default now. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay, that's a change since the developer mm -hmm. version. That that probably they thought this might scare people too much. Sure. But the notion of an app, so an application can be asked to to kind of terminate by the uh, operating system if the resources are needed but can be re relaunched instantly the application of course gets to say you know I'm not, wait a minute hold on I, let me say that okay now you can do it yeah. um, there's sudden termination automatic termination let's I want to take a break with it when we come back I want to talk about some stuff that users are going to see particularly the new mission control it's considerable new user interface modifications we're talking about uh, lion we still will talk about we have not but we will talk about Apple's earnings call. Good news, of course, uh, there. And new hardware. Some really interesting new hardware. And the loss of a dearly loved Mac. Gone forever. Before we do that, though, our guest, by the way, uh, for the first time ever, really glad to have OS Ken. Uh, tell us your uh, the name. Uh, how do I find the uh, Mac OS Ken podcast? Um, well, online it's macoscan.com or just search iTunes for macoscan. That's the easiest way. And then uh, searching iTunes for macoscan will get you both that and macoscan live, which is a call-in show that we I do that every do Wednesday night. Yeah, I love it that you do that. You'll be doing that tonight. Yeah, we will be doing that tonight. Yeah, I crazy think long great. day. Yeah, thanks. So nice to have you on the show. I don't know what's kept me. So long. <laughs> I think I thought you were just competition. Oh, yeah. but yeah. now I know it's you're a friend of me. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. Well, thanks. No, seriously, thanks for having me. I appreciate. No, I, you know, I've been meaning to for the longest time, and so I'm so glad we could. Uh, and of course, Don, uh, our great friend Don McAllister from Screencasts Online, Andy Anako mm -hmm. from the Chicago Sun Times, who's writing his own. Are you going to make it twenty-seven thousand and one words? No, I. I... My, I, have a, I have an editor in Chicago who could be here in about three hours and kill me. So it's it's, it's, it's also also I'm not as hard a worker as John Syracuse is. I'm, so it's got, it looks like it's going to be clocking in at about four thousand. I'm, I'm four thousand words. I've got another three paragraphs to write, and I'm done. I can only think that John hasn't just hasn't gotten any sleep in the last you know three oh, or four God. days. No, no. I, I uh, he uh, I, I went out to dinner with him a few weeks ago and. It was, this was just, please, at Apple's ship line, so I don't have to write any more about this. I want my life back. But as, as, as he did with Snow Leopard and Leopard before it, he has written the definitive kind of summary of everything, especially, I mean, it gets technical within the first six pages, everything under the hood that you might want to know uh, as a serious power user. Um, but I think that I think it, we can summarize the bottom line is that it is truly the iOSification of the desktop. Um, and that can be good and that can be bad. He taught me a new word. Let me see if I can find it in the, uh, in the review. What is it? it it's, it's what, uh, oh, can I, I gotta look it up. I, I think I'd, I'd rather say, I'd rather say that it's the most future forward release of the OS since 10.4. Okay. Future forward. And, and, and part of that involves taking some components from iOS, but it's mostly let's, this is what we're, these are the introduction of the new technologies that Apple is going to be relying on for the next two, three, four, five years. I think he introduces to me anyway, the word skeuomorphic, <laughs> I, which I love, which is when you take something, uh, on a desktop, a computer screen, and you make it look like the real-world analog, and he uses as an example this appalling <laughs> stitchery <laughs> on the uh, on the uh, calendar, the leather stitching. Just it's nicely done, but why? So we'll talk about. And oh yeah, by the way, look at that. There's a little edge of paper left over from the last page you ripped off. Uh, why? Oh why, Apple? We'll talk about that too in just a bit. But before we do, I want to thank our good friends. At Citrix, guys who make GoToMeeting and, of course, make it Mac capable. GoToMeeting is the greatest way to meet you've ever tried. Uh, you can start your meeting in seconds, even if your attendees have never used GoToMeeting before. It's as simple as sending them uh, a link or an invitation. In fact, I do it uh, through a calendar invitation. So they get a pop-up in their email. It adds it to iCal. They click the link, and they're in the meeting. Phone number that they can call is there if they want to use a teleconferencing, but of course they can also use VoIP, use their Mac, uh, built-in uh, microphone and a headset to make the call. Uh, they see your screen, you can see their screen, everybody's in the meeting instantly. There are no technical hurdles, no headaches. You don't waste time getting started, you just get to the point. We use it even just for teleconferences because it's so much easier to start a meeting that way. I just love it. Um, 
And, by the way, iPad capable, so you can attend a meeting on the iPad, and that is pretty dramatic. I want you to try go to a meeting right now. Click the Try It Free button. Promo code on this is, let me make sure I got it right, MacBreak. Offer code MacBreak, and uh, you can try it free for 30 days. Try it with your favorite clients. Try it with those tough clients. Try it with the people at work who are Luddites. Who don't like anything technical. You'll see. It's amazing. It is just makes your meeting so much better. They'll love it. You'll love it. And I have a feeling you want to buy it. And the good news is one flat monthly rate for as many meetings as you want, as long as you want, makes it very affordable. Give it a try today. Go to meeting.com. Offer code MACBREAK for 30 days free. Go to meeting. It is the way to meet online. So, what is that word again? I can't, I wish I could remember. It's, it's Greek. I'd never heard it before. He, it, skew, skewomorphic, is that how you say it? Mm-hmm. You had, you heard, Don, you're nodding like you know this word. You've heard this. Yes. You've used it yeah, in, yeah, in no, a it, sentence. Yeah, no, I did, um, I was at a Thinking Digital Conference and actually came up in, um, in some of the, the talks there about this, you know, um, making uh, inanimate objects or objects that don't really need this layer of authenticity to sort of overlay this, uh, this, this, this real life rendering on them. And I, I get, I mean, I would guess that the reason to do this is make people feel comfortable with it. Oh, it looks like my real calendar. But uh, Syracuse makes the point. He says that uh, OS 10 Lion is writing checks it can't cash. For instance, he says, you know, this, this tear off implies that you could tear off this page. You can't. That, you know, that, that there are things that the UI is implying that don't, that don't help. Yeah. And I'm so, not sure I really want stitching mm -hmm. on a digital calendar. It's, it's, it's possible to be kind of a Sheldon about this. So you, we understand you can't tear a page <laughs> off of the screen. We're doing something pretty to make it look interesting. But you could, right. well, but you could tear, you can tear, there are plenty of apps where you can tear pages off. But actually, actually, that gives me an idea of something to think about. What if we, what if you change the system clock to December? Will there, I, I bet you any amount of money that there'd be thicker stack of torn off pages because somebody at Apple thought that <laughs> this is the end of the year that we've torn off 12 pages of calendar. <laughs> well, they've done the same with a dress book, haven't they? They've turned it into a proper book. Yeah, and they so. put book, a bookmark there. What do you think happens when you click that bookmark? Can you move it? Can you tear it? No, it, it shows groups. I guess that's what that double head icon should be yeah. doing for yeah. you. Um, you. You can apparently turn pages, but he complains that the page pages showing on the left and right don't change. It's, uh, you know, it's nice to know that this is a hand-sewn signature, but do I really need that uh, in this day and age? I mean... Yeah. Well, you, you go too far with it. That, that's that's been an item of pretty severe discussion over the past two or three weeks. Saying, "Well, should, why are why are we laying things out to look like a paper calendar? Today's generation has never seen a paper calendar because with their rocket boots and their flared trousers, they've never heard of those things." But I, my, I mean, my reaction is, can you think of a better way to let people see what their entire month looks like? Do they have a grid of seven by like uh, seven by six? Well, that's one of the uh, the uh, arguments that John makes is. Uh, you, if okay, in, on a computer desktop, especially a big computer desktop, which many of us now have, um, you can show more than the 30 days in a month. But then you never do in the Apple iCal. Uh, it just makes the makes each day bigger. He he says, you know, it, it, this is a computer. We could have more than four weeks at a time, or you know, seven days. We could we can we can use this space more intelligently. We don't have to be slavish to the physicality. And I think that's his complaint: is that it's slavish. Um, I mean, it's a minor complaint. I don't think it's a huge complaint. It's not going to drive me crazy. But I, I think I, it goes the stitching's to, a little annoying. I have yeah, to admit. I, I, I think it goes back to making it. Not. I, I hate the word. I don't think they're dumbing down the operating system, but they are making it more user friendly and more friendly to people who perhaps mightn't use computers. Because I, I still think that the, you know, the, the the transition from having the iPod as being the Halo device when people had an iPod and they moved to the Mac because they liked the iPod and they got all the music on it. It's completely different now. The, the Halo device now is the iPhone. You know, and the iPad, mm. and uh, that's probably going to drive a lot more people to the desktop and laptop platforms. You know, once they've used those devices for a while. So, this is really just, you know, it's the iOSification of, of, of OS 10. It's just to make it more friendly for those people who uh, who perhaps have cut the teeth on on an iOS device and, and want to come across to a desktop Mac. That uh, some of these, you know, small minor touches just make it that bit more friendly and that bit more easy for you know, quote, normal people to use. Now, one thing I do like, uh, and I think is a good is a good uh, positive move in the right direction, is mission control. Andy, you've used it for a while. Would you describe mission control to me? Uh, it's sort of a mashup between spaces and expose. 
Uh, I, one thing that's absolutely great about it is that it makes expose into a little bit more useful uh, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a thing. Expo, the old expose, you'd have like if you have like more than let's say a dozen windows open, it's no good because they're all like poster stamp size. You know what's going on. The, the mission control will group them together by application. You can also select a wind a, a thumbnail within that pile and then use quick look to so, so you can uh, see exactly what that window content is. And then you can manipulate that as if were like a document whole and then move it onto another uh, move it onto another desktop move it onto uh, another application uh, there's also an organization for different spaces up at the top there so that's another way of organizing windows around and it makes it really easy to create new spaces there's a hidden control up on the left on the right hand side of the screen uh, that will sort of slide in a brand new space in there i like so, it that when you take an app full screen it makes it a space yeah so it's, it, make, it makes it easy to flip between all these different full right. screen views. I didn't um, use spaces because it was kind of non-intuitive and it was, seemed like a lot yeah. of work. But this I will use, I think, because I will use full screen apps. And the fact that I can four finger swipe an app out or, or, or launch this mission control and see what else is there is, I think, a nice, to me, that yeah. seems sensible. I, I, I kind of have to defer judgment. I don't, I don't respond. I think it's cool, but, and this is another lit, direct lift from my review, it's like I also thought that Expose was cool. I also thought that Spaces right. was cool, but about a, week after, about a week after writing the review, I never used it again yeah. because yeah. it just is not the way that I think. It's not the way that I use the thing. So hopefully when more full screen apps start to appear and more of the apps that I use are full screen, I'll find space in my heart. Uh, for for mission control right now it's a cool thing but i i was thinking about the uh, the dashboard is now like the extreme leftmost thing when you're scrolling from pane to pane to, from running app to running space to running space and it occurred to me that that's the first time i have seen dashboard on any one of my macs in what must be seven eight nine ten months yep <laughs> Yep, it's, I never it's use a it. Cool yeah. idea that became completely useless, yeah. and it's still. Well, there. What about this? And this, not what this is. This is pure why. iOS. You now can see all your applications in a grid. Yeah, you can one. even, if you hold down the option key, they jiggle, <laughs> and and you can even drag them into folders. Look, we have little iOS style folders for utilities and developer. There. I mean, this is pure iOS. There's even the dots for which screen you're on. Yeah. Good idea, <laughs> Don. Bad idea. No, I, I, again, I don't know if it's something that I'll use a lot, to be honest, especially, I think lots of these features are best suited to the laptop rather than, I mean, I, I sit in front of a 30-inch, you know, Yeah, yeah, you don't need uh, this yeah. on a big I've screen. I've got a double, yeah. you know, double screens as well, and yeah. one of the things that's slightly irritating is that the full screen mode actually doesn't handle multiple monitors. Um, when you do a full screen mode, it just goes on your primary monitor, so the, the secondary monitor is, is pretty much redundant. But um, I think on, on a monitor, uh, so, sorry, on a, on a laptop, I think a lot of these features are, are be really very, very useful. So, um, um, but, but again, I probably won't use it on my desktop as much. I'll probably stick to, to some of my uh, favorites like Launch Bar and Command Tab, etc. But I think, and I think, I don't know if you'd agree with me, Ken, I think the laptop, Apple sees the laptop as its future, it's particularly the Air. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what was it? Um, I know we're not getting to the earnings call yet, but I think it was... Uh, uh, I can't remember. Somebody asked uh, Tim Cook what was the deal with um, not selling as many Macs as everybody thought they were going to sell, and and Tim Cook said this time last year we launched uh, the MacBook Pro, and this year we're launching the iMac, and we don't sell as many iMacs as we sell MacBook Pros. So I mean, just just even in the answers to the questions, they're seeing that as the future. The question, of course, then when Steve Jobs goes to WWDC and demotes the Mac. Um, I mean, is the laptop the future, or is it just the whole iOS thing? Is it the whole portability thing? But but yeah, it's not the desktop. They, uh, yeah, I mean, so people like Don, uh, who are desktop users, and I have, you know, I have a big Mac Pro. All our editors have big Mac Pros. We're just, we're kind of a, a sideline. In, You're in, the truck people. You're the, the truck, truck people. people that Steve Jobs was talking about. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I have to say, I've, I've been seriously considering. I've got my Mac Pro, which I use for video editing. But really, the the only power of the Mac Pro I need for video editing is when I actually do the video encoding. Uh, I actually use a MacBook Air for my interesting. Editing. And like, I did a show last week all about Final Cut Pro 10, and I actually recorded the entire show um, using Final Cut Pro 10 on the MacBook Air. And this is the old generation MacBook Air. This is one of the you know, uh, one of the really old ones now that's six months old, but hasn't got this fancy new processor, and uh, and it ran fine. The only the only time it hiccuped was when it was doing lots of sort of background rendering, but it sort of makes you think. Well, 
And it's such a pain to have to go somewhere and do something to move from a desktop to my laptop. So, you know, I'm seriously considering moving to a laptop as my primary machine, even to do my editing on. Still keep the Mac Pro and, and then just use that as like a render farm, you know, when I actually need to do the heavy lifting. But these new MacBook Airs, I mean, they're, they're saying the, the performance on them is, is in some cases like two and a half times uh, the, the previous MacBook Air. Plus, there's also some uh, on-chip video encoding and uh, decoding capabilities as well so we'll have to see how that works but you know I, I could very well see myself moving from the Mac Pro to uh, a decent spec MacBook Air or MacBook Pro and then just having one of these fantastic new uh, Thunderbolt monitors yeah yeah well let's talk about the hardware in just a bit mm. uh, in, ser in terms of security uh, you won't notice it but Syracuse it talks about the fact that sandboxing is now part of the OS and in fact starting in November all Mac apps sold in the App Store must sandbox which is a separation of one process from another so that uh, corruption cannot spread um, you've got privilege separation you've got enhanced keychain you've got cryptographic signatures uh, to uh, lock stuff down um, yeah can you uh, have him call the uh, ISDN line yeah that'd be great so we're gonna have John Syracuse a call just so we can applaud him and then he'll <laughs> hang up he's too tired to talk for more than a few minutes but I'll I'll, uh, I'll put the ISDN line on. If he calls, we'll 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 hear him uh, we'll hear him call in. So this is uh, you know I, Apple has always been very careful not to trumpet security because to do so would imply that there's a need for security. Obviously, though there is, and uh, they're paying attention to it. And it sounds like they've done some some good things in that regard. Any thoughts there, gentlemen? Before I move on. Yeah, I think general users will just see the the. The, the cosmetic changes to line and not really have the, the appreciation of the, what's going on under the hood. But it's very difficult to put that across to, to anybody, really. Right. Yeah, hopefully that we'll, we'll have the same situation we've had for years where there are just no significant incidents right. of mm -hmm. nasty wear ever being released and It'll attacking a, a Mac device. Well, I'm, I'm actually even even keener to, to know about uh, the uh, the new file vault encryption, where now it's the, the file vault encryption will now extend to the entire volume, and it's going to be possible to remote wipe the entire drive. Uh, so if it gets lost or stolen, you, you have to you have to make that choice between okay, do I keep my security spyware installed so I can keep taking secret pictures of the guy who stole it, or do I do I ignite the bomb so that make sure that he can't get access to any of the data that's on it? So that's, uh, a, lot, that's a feature a lot of people are gonna like. Are we gonna miss uh, Rosetta? <laughs> is anybody gonna no. miss Rosetta? The, the, the question is, are you a Quicken user or are you not a Quicken it's, user? It's if mostly you are Quicken. a Quicken user, yeah. how are you enjoying that hand churned butter? <laughs> you look <laughs> fetching in that bonnet. Rosetta is the ability to run you. PowerPC yeah. code. It was included in every version of OS X all the way up to Snow Leopard. It is now for the first time not there. There's no even download that you can do. There's nothing. Uh, yeah. You just can't run PowerPC code, period. It's been, what, f how many years since? Uh, five years. Five years, four or five years. So I guess that's not unreasonable. Um, yeah. What do you Sometimes. do, though, if you want to run Quicken? I guess they're putting some stuff in Quicken that will let you perhaps run Quicken. But the, the, the most important thing, the message to get out today is to make sure that if you are running Quicken, the last thing you need to do before you install Line is make sure you export your data. <laughs> export your because data, baby. You're going you're to have a shiny new Mac that can't even run Quicken to export your data again. So you're just going to have to make sure you keep that in mind. Syracuse mentions the fact that he uses a very old version of Photoshop, doesn't use Photoshop enough to justify the hundreds of dollars to upgrade to an Intel version, but it runs just fine. And he actually, he's right that Rosetta actually, in some cases, runs faster. On a, on a late model Mac with Intel than it did on a Power PC, uh, but you just those people you're just going to be uh, left behind, I guess. What can you say? Uh, there is a lot. If you're a programmer, and I'll ask John about it because he is a programmer, but there's a lot new uh, stuff in uh, uh, in the programming environment, including a new garbage collection model, um, completely rewritten compiler IDE, new syntax and Objective C. Um, memory management's been changed. Uh, it's, 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 and there's something called ARC, A R C. Uh, but I'll have to ask John about that because that's that's really uh, beyond my ken, OS ken. Let's uh, let's talk about the new hardware in just a moment, and John Syracuse will join us just for a uh, victory lap before he goes back to bed. We woke him up. <laughs> you may not be uh, you may not be so so excited about this new hardware that we're going to talk about in a second that you want to sell all your old Mac hardware, but maybe you are. Every time a new iPhone comes out, 
these guys gazelle get lots of calls new ipads they'll sell your old computer too your video games your playstations your cameras your ebook readers if you're ready to move on to the next new thing, get some money for your old gadgets. How many of us have stuff lying around in drawers and closets on shelves that we don't use, but actually are worth good money? There are members of our chat room who've paid the month's rent, people who shall remain nameless, by selling their goodies on Gazelle. Gazelle.com. Just don't sell it. Gazelle it. Visit G-A-Z-E-L-L-E.com. -L -L -E like the, like the African animal.com. And uh, take a look at what amazing prices you can get for your used gadgets. iPhones running from $20 to $200. MacBooks, $600 on average. In fact, on average, everybody who visits Gazelle gets at least 100 bucks for their stuff. And if it's stuff that is unusable, doesn't start, doesn't work, or just nobody would ever want, they'll recycle it responsibly. No landfill, no offshoring. It's, it's responsible recycling, and that's a nice feel, feeling, especially since their data experts will take your data off. They will wipe it. Gazelle just does everything right. They're eco-friendly. They're great for nonprofits. You can, instead of having a bake sale, have a gadget drive. You can have even your own page, your own dedicated gadget page for your nonprofit. Visit gazelle.com. Enter the make and model of your used gadget. See how much Gazelle offers it for you. Uh, in fact, they, they rate you, they'll see a graph because prices change up and down from time to time. Then they'll pay for the postage. Just throw it all in a box. They'll pay for the postage, and you'll get a check or an Amazon gift card. Or There's lots of different ways to get paid by Gazelle. But I have one extra thing. You get a 5% bonus with the Amazon gift card. But I have one extra thing I want to tell you on checkout. Enter in the offer code. Let me check you. I think it's MacBreak. No, Twit. Is that what it is, really? Yeah, Twit. T-W-I-T. And uh, you'll get an additional 5% bonus on the offer they've already made to you. So it's like free money. Don't sell it, Gazelle. G A Z E L L E dot com. If you've got old crap, Gazelle wants it. <laughs> Gazelle.com. And don't forget to use the offer code TWIT to get a bonus 5%. All right, we are uh, talking with uh, Mac OS Ken. Ken Ray is here in the uh, studio. It's great to talk to you again. I, haven't, I, don't, I don't know if we've talked since uh, Tech TV days, it seems it's been a long time. Um, Maybe we it have. It was Jillian's? Yeah, it was <laughs> yeah, it was the thing that Adam did at Jillian's. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Uh, that, yeah. yeah Mac, at Mac World Expo. Yeah. Also here, a guy we see an awful lot considering he lives in uh, Oxford, England, Don McAllister, or Liverpool. Oxford? Liverpool. Oxford. <laughs> Liverpool. Sorry. <laughs> Liverpool. Okay. And That's I hope okay. my Liverpudlian was not offensive to you a couple of uh, days ago. No, that was fine. I'm just glad you corrected yourself. I was I Cockney at first. Cockney yeah. <laughs> no, still not quite Oxford, but still. That was okay. Will Harris is from Oxford. That's right. Don McAllister's from, he's a Liverpudlian. Yeah, and, I even uh, forgive you for my uh, for, for for dissing me on my music choices. Well, no, that you deserve that. <laughs> Actually, I have to say, I was really glad to know a few a few uh, Europeans because when Spotify hit the U.S., mm -hmm. I could go to you and uh, Cedric and Grand from uh, France and have have lists because you guys have had it for a while. Yeah, yeah and Don, you were right. It is great. It's a great service. Yeah, fantastic. Service. I couldn't. I couldn't really. And I think there's still some people who uh, probably don't think it's better than, say, RDO or MOG or Rhapsody or Napster, whatever the Zoom marketplace, Zoom Pass. But I yeah. think it is. I just something about it. I don't know what. I can't quite put my finger on it, but I really enjoy it. And partly it's that because you're my Facebook friend, as soon as I uh, logged into Facebook with Spotify, there are your playlists. I found a really great service. It's not really applicable to, to the U.S. yet, I don't think, but there's a, there's a service. I'll have to dig it out and perhaps give it for the show notes, but for, for U.K. and European people, it's a service that uh, goes ahead and mashes up the BBC playlists so that if you... I have if it. You, I did it. Oh, that's brilliant. It just, yes. it's basically, you, you, you subscribe to a channel that is a BBC, uh, a BBC radio station, and then it lists all the songs that they played the day before without any of the DJs talking over them, and you can just play them in your... <laughs> it's fantastic. It, it leverages... Is a, I think the thing I'm thinking this is really the thing that makes Spotify what it is the fact that you can click a URL on a page and it will load that playlist to Spotify mm -hmm. that by itself I think because it means that you can have websites with Spotify playlists and stuff that's right that's right and that's one of the that's how this thing works um, I is it Bibli Biblify Biblify that seems to ring a bell yes I think that's, that's right. it because I have all these Biblify playlists yeah top albums yeah indie Rock, folk, 
and Six Music, which I presume is BBC Six. Mm -hmm. So this is the stuff they played last night. Yeah, minus the, minus the DJs. I love it. <laughs> and it's automatically updated. I mean, it's just little things like that. But the reason I dissed you is because you had... It wasn't, you know, I like ZZ Top. No, <laughs> it was the Duran Duran, I think, that really... Uh, ah, was that? Uh, well, yeah. to be honest, uh, yeah, I didn't really put... Uh, I didn't pay much close attention to those public lists, but I've rectified <laughs> that since. So, uh, you uh, have? Uh, what happened? They're all gone. Oh, no, if you click on the button at the bottom... Oh, uh, see all 682 tracks. Yeah, there absolutely. we go. My top tracks. So you have one massive playlist. One big playlist, yeah. See, I'm thinking now maybe I'll just go ahead and stick with Rhapsody because I've got plenty of playlists that I don't need anybody to know what I'm listening to. <laughs> you don't have to publish them all, right, Don? No, you don't have to. You can select that. Oh, okay. But I'm that was worry. the secret to Don's embarrassment is that apparently he, <laughs> he had published them all yeah. without, without knowing it. It's so, Raining Men is a peppy, peppy tune. <laughs> Duran, Duran, <laughs> baby. <laughs> No, I was just teasing you, and it's, it's, I thought that this was the cool thing, is I could see your uh, your uh, playlists. I really love that. Uh, all right, let's talk about the new hardware. Bye-bye, white MacBook. No more MacBooks, baby. Uh, that was the $1,000 plastic offering, the last plastic uh laptop are we surprised are we regretting it it's the one that i have to say a lot of schools bought mm. well I, do you I think was... that they're going to when they when they ditched the 17 inch uh, imac a few years ago the white imac a few years ago they still left it available for education do you ah, think they maybe they'll do, do you that. think they leave it available for education or do you think they put education either to the uh macbook air or to the ipad a because, 999 uh, air to me i mean it's a smaller drive that's the difference yeah it's yeah. just it's just a great student device, I think. It's, it's it light. Seems like, it seems like it would be. At the same time, uh, Tim Cook did say again on the conference call um, that last quarter they actually sold more iPads to K-12 through than they sold wow. uh, Macs. Chat room's telling me that, yes, EDU still has access to the white MacBook Air. Apple Insider says okay. that, uh, right, yeah. available to education institu institutions only. Right. Okay. 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 Well, I guess that makes I'll, sense. I'll, I'll, not, I'll channel backlog and non-direct institution customers. We'll see their orders canceled effective immediately. Wow. Wow. Canceled, not I replaced did. with something else. But I guess that makes yeah. sense, yeah. I, thought, see, I, I did think that was an interesting move, I mean, because they are now really saying that a MacBook Air is, is as good as any other Mac by saying that they're replacing mm -hmm. the, the Volks Mac, the one that's, mm -hmm. there's the most affordable. We, we, <laughs> they, could, they, they, could, they could credibly say that their $999 MacBook nothing was a conventional 15-inch notebook that's, compatible, that's competitive with premium, like $800 to $1,000 uh, uh, Windows notebooks. Now they really don't have that because now when you do the comparisons, it's, and what kind of optical do, do I get Blu-ray? No, you don't get an optical drive. Well, do I at least get a 500 gig? No, you get mm. 64 gigs of flash yeah. memory for that money. Yeah. So that's a, it's, I, I do think that's an interesting move. It was the last uh, Core 2, was it not? I mean, are, are we now all i5? I think even the minis now are i5 or yes, i7. Right. I yeah. So. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so that makes sense. I mean, that's the modern uh, Apple processor. Uh, My concern is health and safety with these new map occurs with schools. I mean, see how sharp they are. Yeah. I mean, at least like a big polycarbonate thing. They so can like hurt, hurt somebody with the air. Well, if, if you're going to get shivved with something, do you want it to be an old toothbrush or the most stylish and powerful ultralight notebook on the market today? I was going to say, what's the uh, what's the James Bond villain who could cut people's heads? Odd job. Odd job. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this, is, this is like a, this is the laptop for him. Odd job's laptop. <laughs> Uh, I, I I am a huge Air fan, and I have to say, Air with Lion gives me kind of... I, I feel like it's now more like an iPad. It's the best of everything. It just really is a very nice fit. Um, of course, I, I put Windows 7 on my Air 2 last night. But. <laughs> Did you... You asked earlier, were we surprised or were we sad? I mean, I've sort of been waiting for this to happen yeah, for a while. Yeah. I mean... Every time there was an update, I sort of expected, okay, th next time it's going to be gone. I mean, were you guys surprised that it finally no, went away as far no. as the public? It was concerned? time. I, it really was I, time. I, I am. You are, really? Andy, really. Well, again, I, I think that they, the, the, a affordable, for Apple at least, an affordable conventional 15-inch notebook served a great many purposes for Apple. Because uh, right, right now we're back to where we were a few years ago where – if someone asks me whether they should be buying a MacBook or a, Win a Windows notebook, and I'm at the point where I have to explain to them, well, here's what you can, what you can get for a thousand dollars if you buy a Mac notebook. Here's what you can get for a thousand dollars if you buy a Windows yeah. notebook. A Windows notebook, you're talking about practically a top of the line machine, 
great build quality, great service, every feature you could possibly want, something that could really do the job of a desktop. And now for that same amount, for $100 more than that, really, you're talking about tiny screen, no optical drive, tiny amount of storage, no Ethernet, two wheels. It's... I'm, I, so that, that's why I'm a little bit surprised. I, Apple's definitely confident about what they're doing over the, over the next two or three years. But as a, someone who sometimes has to answer that question, I now have to say, it it's cost, it costs a lot more money, yeah. but it really is worth it with yeah. all the. You know, It'd be nice if they had a lower price error, I guess. Mm -hmm. I mean, nine ninety nine, you get a one point six gigahertz Core i five, two gigs of memory. It's kind of light. Uh, 64 gig drive. A lot of people will say that's too small. And across the board on the air, you only get the Intel HD graphics, the motherboard uh, graphics, mm -hmm. uh, which uses RAM, by the way. It doesn't have its own dedicated RAM. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, that a comparable uh, Windows laptop, we're talking 300 bucks, 400 bucks maybe. Well, yeah, but it's the whole thing, right, where Apple's pushing everybody to iOS devices. I mean, they're pushing. They've got this vision. So, if you want and, something uh, that cheap, buy an iPad. Is that what, is that what Apple's telling you? Oh, I think that's. I mean, and I think for most people, an iPad is enough. I mean, this group is not really a good representation, right? I mean, for my mom, an iPad would be enough. For my dad, for a lot of my friends, an iPad would be enough computer. It would not only be enough; it'd be the right choice for a lot right. of people. It, it, it depends. I mean, a few months ago, uh, my uh, uh, my aunt needed a new machine. She was replacing her like 1993, like Pentium 3 desktop, compact desktop, uh, and she wanted to get a Mac, and so we talked about it, and I I showed her the iPad, but it was a little bit too different for her. She just, right. she wanted to, it, she, there's something reassuring about keyboard, disc, so I, can, I can play DVDs on my, on my mm -hmm. bus trips. So a lot of those people buy Windows machines, and uh, yeah. that's a fact. Uh, they buy uh, they buy netbooks. They they buy underpowered Windows machines, but they buy Windows machines. Um, I have to say that with the iOSification of Lion, the people my, well, my wife's a good example. She has a 13-inch MacBook, and it was too much for her to figure out. She's so much happier with the iPad. I think though, in some of the things they've done with Lion, will make that MacBook much more palatable for her, mm -hmm. and, and it will suddenly be the right thing for her again. I don't know. I think is the that, Air is, is such that, a nice device, but it's just price-wise, it, you're right, Andy. It's tough. It's a tough, is, tough pitch. Do you think that's the way they're pushing it? I mean, are they pushing it to make the uh, laptops and the computers more palatable to people, or are they pushing, are they pushing the iOSification of Lion to make the iOS devices more palatable to computers? Oh, that's interesting. I mean, to to people who, I mean, like like Andy was saying about his aunt, she's more comfortable with the keyboard. She's more comfortable right. with a with a computer uh, with a with a monitor. I mean, these are these are these are kind of issues that. We're in this weird place right now where we had to convince people for a very long time, and by we, I mean industry, had to convince people for a very long time, no, you really do need a computer, and now Apple's going, no, yeah. you don't really need a computer. <laughs> what you need is this thing that does all the stuff that a computer did but, and some other stuff, too. But we know that actually the iPad's a computer. Right, yeah, right. Really. But most people, I mean, that's a hard sell. We talked about that on the uh, on the Colin show last week. I mean, technically, the iPhone's a computer. Technically, the iPod Touch is a computer. Technically, the iPad's a computer. But none of them feel like a computer. And that, I guess, could go back to that whole stitching thing. Although, why you want a computer to feel like a paper uh, calendar is, is kind of uh, weird. Uh, but, I mean, they do some stuff on the iPad to make it feel like a computer. And technically, it is. But it's still, there's a mental hurdle. If I don't have a physical keyboard, then I don't have what I need. Well, there is, I have to point out, a, uh, a $600 Mac, which is actually pretty compelling. The new Mac Mini, I think, is very nice now. Uh, they've put an i5 and i7s in them. Thunderbolt, by the way, Thunderbolt's across the board, of course. That's, mm -hmm. that's, that's a given. Um, and, and it starts at $599, and for $599, you get a 2.3 gigahertz i5, 2 gigs of memory, a 500 gig hard drive, you're still getting motherboard graphics, but that's that's a pretty compelling device. You spend uh, seven ninety nine, you're going to get a fat, little faster uh, i five and more memory. Uh, and of course, you can configure all of these. Uh, I, I should have showed that with the uh, mm -hmm. with the. Oh, here's John Syracuse. Hey, John. Are you there, John? Can you hear me? Hello, John. I heard him pick up, and then he hung up. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Maybe he can't hear me. 
Well, to continue on, maybe he'll say something in a moment. Um, you could put an i7 in there for an additional $100. That's not too bad. 8 gigs for $200. You could put an SSD in it, $600, but that's kind of nice. I think this is... Uh, and by the way, with the Thunderbolt display, easy for 1000 bucks to add a 27-inch monitor. And now you've basically got an iMac, right? Without a keyboard and mouse. And, and, and an iMac price, that's 2500 bucks. Let's add the mouse... Let's add the keyboard. Hey, by the way, should people now buy mice or trackpads? Trackpads. Seems like that's the way to go, even if, you, if you're looking at the Magic Mouse. I, I, I try to use a lion with the Magic Mouse, and uh, I regret the fact that the Magic Mouse is so light and easy to throw. New recommendation. <laughs> I think you're right. And whatever you do, don't buy a Windows Mouse because you're gonna, the, scroll, the scroll is going to confuse the hell out of you. Mm. Uh, I think uh, you're right. I think the tra I want to try it with the trackpad on my uh, on my new iMac, but I'm thinking the trackpad is now the uh, input device of choice. Mm. What do you think? Well, you, you do lose a certain amount of precision. That's that's the only thing with the trackpad. And and for pro prolonged use, I, I find it can be a bit of a strain to use the trackpad all the time. But um, I mean, it fully supports the gestures, which is great. Uh, that's why I'm still trying to sort of uh, use my pen tablet and the trackpad. So I have the pen tablet on the on the right hand side and the trackpad on the left hand side of the keyboard, so that I can sort of use uh, gestures with one hand and my pen with the other. So, and that actually works okay once you get used to the reverse scrolling side of things. Are you naturally ambidextrous? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> he just looks that way. I have another thing on the left hand side as well. So no, I sort of taught myself to be like that. Hey, John, can you hear me now? Hi, John. I hear you breathing. I don't know why he can't hear me. Is it something I'm doing? He's in a post-writing coma. Yeah. <laughs> he's, 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 he's just... Liquid, liquids and glucose. You forgot to push the liquids he, and the just, glucose. He just came on to breathe for us. John Syracuse is an author at Ars Technica who is known now for his amazing, you know, lengthy, thoughtful pieces uh, on OS 10, he started. I think he started doing it with Leopard, Snow Leopard, certainly, and uh, now OS 10 Lion. Twenty-seven thousand words later, can you hear me now, John? No. <laughs> you know, even John Syracuse's silence is illuminating, it's shocking, technical detail, and authoritative. I'll take Lots John Syracuse's silence against against Gizmodo's, you know, eight thousand pages for what it went over any day. We know we knew the mini needed an update, but are we surprised that the mini is as powerful as this? No, it's 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 kind of the embedded system that uh, that Apple makes, uh, because every time I see one in operation, it's usually someplace that's oddly out of place. Either it's hidden behind a TV in a living room, or it's hidden inside a server closet with like a hundred like blade servers doing something else, uh, doing something else entirely. I'm not sure that I ever met anybody who, given the option, when they needed to get a a, a, a conventional desktop Mac, that they decided to get a Mac Mini then attach a monitor to it. Yeah, I'm quite surprised at the the um, the way they've taken away the DVD. Um, yeah. That came as a bit of a shock because they did that with the server uh, on the old uh, Mac Mini, but now there's no optical drive in it. I which didn't is, notice. Uh, you're right. You have to buy yeah. it as an external. Although it stack, it would stack nicely, but it makes it so much thinner this way. Yeah, yeah. But um, it's it's quite. Um, it, it, it struck me really that that's quite a brave move to take. I suppose it, I, again, that's the way they're going, though, isn't it? I mean, the, the MacBook Airs are, are, are having no optical drives, but uh, for the Mac Mini not to have one either, I thought that was quite a a significant move. I have to say, I look at these and they look so sexy and elegant. I almost want to buy one, even though I have no use for it whatsoever. <laughs> it's like I, I, I look at that space next to my TV and think, you know, but I, I could, I could find a use for a Macintosh. Who cooked my TV set? It didn't take long though with, with upgrading to get it to twenty six hundred bucks. Yeah. And at that point, it's like, <laughs> yeah, maybe not. At six hundred bucks, okay. Uh, but uh, it, as soon as you start putting uh, options in there, I guess that 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 kind of middle priced one. By the way, there is a Lion Server version. Mm -hmm. What's the story of Lion Server? I thought that was going to be included with Lion. Is that uh, still a separate uh, product? Yeah, it's forty five dollars, isn't it, or something oh, okay. like that? Okay, all right. Yeah, okay. I don't remember the exact price, but it was included with the uh, it was included with the developer builds and everybody, you know, people who talk about it or talk against the NDA or whatever, we're saying, oh, it's going to be included. And then it came out that it wasn't going to be included. And people were like, hey, that's a screw job. We thought it was going to be included. Right. That's because, you know, people were talking about things they weren't. But 45 bucks is not exactly pricey. Is that the right price? Because it's somewhere around there. I can't remember. It's around it there, exactly. Yeah. yeah. 
All right, we're going to try to get John on via Skype here. <laughs> oh, boy, we're in trouble when Skype is the safety fallback. <laughs> Skype hey, the, the fallback position. <laughs> While you're trying to get him, forgive me, this is my first time. Can I quickly do the Brady Bunch thing? Because I've never done the... I know, oh, it kind yeah, of is cool, this. Okay, yeah. so, so there's... So now I'm looking down at Andy, right? Uh, sort of, yeah, yeah. Okay, and maybe now, it'll help if I, sing, if I sing a song. Here's a story of some nerdy guys who got together to talk about the Mac. All right, thank you. I, Two I of just... them had hair of nothing. One <laughs> of them had a hat on. And a what? Both, both <laughs> socks. I'm sorry. I... Well, it's a Boston hat, so you can't really, you know, the, with the hat on thing. I'm, t I'm telling you, we're a post all-star break team, okay? <laughs> We John Syracuse, can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Oh, he sounds like he's so tired. John Syracuse, we just all wanted to give you a standing ovation. Thank you. Thank awesome. You. awesome. Thank you very much for an amazing 27,000-word article that even humbles Andy Anako, which is saying quite a bit. <laughs> You, you, you are the gay Talese of, 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 of back journalism. <laughs> We're waiting for the movie option. <laughs> are you exhausted, John? I am a little tired. Yeah. How? So, so you, you obviously you started this with the developer edition. Yeah, and not only did I start it a long time ago, I had to finish it on July first, more or less. But but I'm sure you waited until this morning to kind of make, dot the eyes, right? To make sure that it's hard to do that. You know, once once the thing goes into sort of the workflow, of making the ebook versions and everything, and getting copy edited and stuff like that, it's hard to make those last minute changes. Well, here you can make it now on Mac Break Weekly. Is there anything that you want? <laughs> it all looked accurate. Uh, there's there's some mistakes. Most of them have been corrected in the online version by now. Okay. The ebook versions probably have to wait till tomorrow to get right. all the corrections in. Uh, but uh, was there anything substantial Apple changed from the Gold Master to this release? Oh, I haven't even downloaded the retail version, yet, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to go back to Snow Leopard, John? <laughs> I'm still going to be Snow using Leopard. a Windows I, machine I for the next month, just until the shakes go away. <laughs> so, John, uh, we've kind of actually used your article as a template for going through a lot of the features, but then you started talking about things like Arc and uh, and uh, garbage collection. We just had to stop. Mm -hmm. Is but as a developer, uh, what do you think? That's a pretty open-ended question. What do I think of what? Uh, the the, the uh, changes under the hood. I think they're all positive. The under the hood changes are rarely controversial. Like they don't do things. Like there's no equivalent of the stitched leather calendar in the under the hood changes. <laughs> they're always doing things that are moving the ball forward by some amount. The only thing you can really get mad about is you know they didn't they didn't do enough internally. Like I spent a while complaining about the lack of a new file system and explaining trying to explain why I even care about stuff like that. Right. Uh, Versioning not, it might have been a lot easier with ZFS, for instance. You know, you never know what could have been. Remember when people wanted Apple to buy B and they bought Next and people were all upset? I mean, you can't say how would it have turned out if they had bought B or they should have bought B or, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. So I can't say whether ZFS would have been better. I can say that ZFS has way more features and is much more modern than HFS+. Plus. But, but something, something's got to be happen there. And it's been a long time and nothing has happened. So that continues to be frustrating. But right. that's not an example of them doing something I don't like. It's just an example of them not changing enough you know i have to say though there is an uh, there are under the hood changes which some might complain about uh for instance um we've been talking about this versioning the fact that applications really don't quit anymore um those things might be a little confusing to users in the sense that especially early on there'll be hybrid situations where some apps will do the versioning some won't uh some will respond properly some won't to this you know shutdown request um at least initially there this some of these under the hood changes could be a little disconcerting even to end users well you know you well what else can you do you have to get, find have some to way to forward. get from here to there yeah yeah no that makes sense what's your favorite feature and then we'll let you go back to bed hmm uh <laughs> Is I've there... got to say that I think the restore is my favorite feature because I love applications that already have that feature. You know, yeah. web browsers have had it for a long time. I use BB Edit, which has the auto restore, and I want that to be in every one of my applications because I hate quitting an application and then reopening it and not remembering what I was doing. Yeah, no, I like that too. I had open. Yep. John Syracuse, once again, thank you. We just wanted to give you a little victory lap here. Well done.
<laughs> Golf clap all around. Thank you. I don't, I, don't over, I don't want to overblow the microphone. But yeah. just, that, that really was like, <laughs> I, got, I, I thought I was like an hour and a half away from like finishing my, my review. And then like I just spent, I, I, I think I must have gone through just like the first five sections of Syracuse. It's like, no, I, that's, 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 where the, that's where the game is right now. That's, that's the level that I have to, oh, damn it. <laughs> Darn it. Urgh. I gotta actually try. I gotta actually get to work really hard on this. No, thank it. Thank you, John. We'll let you go. Okay. Take care, John Syracuse, okay, Ars Technica, and 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 that is an important point, by the way, that you can now not only read it uh, online at arstechnica dot uh, twenty seven thousand words, but you can get an ebook and a PDF as well uh, on that site. And uh, so, if you want to kind of have it on your Kindle or on your iPhone and uh, or your iPad and read this at your leisure. Uh, and it, more importantly, and I think they say this on this our site, it is a way of supporting long-form journalism, uh, and I, I think uh, deserves, frankly, the f whatever it is four bucks. So thank you, John. Take care. Bye bye. He just fell fell back asleep. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He sounded a little tired. <laughs> We're going to take a break and come back with uh, earnings. Well, let's. We want to do earnings now, and then we'll take a break and come back with the with the picks. Yeah, maybe highlights, Ken, of the earnings call. It was a good quarter. Yes, it was a very good quarter. Yes, I mean the one thing, I, I mean, it was insane. It was an insanely good quarter. <laughs> uh, record number of iPhones sold. Record number of iPads. Eh, it's hard to not sell a record number of iPads. It seems right now. I mean, as long as they're delivering okay, because I mean they were, uh, well. That's not, uh, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know what to say, except that it was an insanely good quarter. But the, um, the iPad outsold the Mac. Actually, that's not right. new, but it's a bigger business than the Mac overall. Right. Uh, more money to be made. They sold twice as many iPads as Macs last quarter. Um, I think that's interesting. Uh, yeah. iPod sales are dropping rapidly. They, they didn't highlight that, but uh, they're down 20% year over year. Right. Um, Although they still dominate the market. And they also, they weren't as bad as most people thought they were going to be as far as iPod sales. Right, right. Um, they didn't quite hit the level of Mac sales that everybody thought they were going to. And I thought those questions around that, Katie Huberty asked um, uh, Tim Cook about that. Um, and I, I loved his answer. You know, uh, somebody else had asked too, like, well, why, why sequentially, why quarter over quarter is this so bad? And he's like, we're not looking quarter over quarter. We're looking year over year. But I'll answer your question. Um, same kind of thing with uh, with Katie Huberty. Why why were the sales not quite as good as everybody expected? Of course, everybody's looking for him to say that the uh, iPad is uh, cannibalizing the Mac. Which he copped to. He said, yeah, there are probably some people who are choosing that. There were also probably some people who were waiting for Lion, which, you know, subtextually means that they were also waiting for the new machines. He also said it's, and I like this, it's cannibalizing Windows sales even worse. <laughs> right. Yeah, that, that, was, that was funny. I mean, they were, it's... The Mac sales, I don't think anybody is really worried about Mac sales because it was still the most Macs they've ever sold in a quarter. Right. Um, there was just, there was a lot of really, I love the Q&A of, uh, of the earnings call. The, the Q&A is always fascinating. That's also where you get the hint that there's going to be, I mean, not like we didn't know that there's going to be an iPhone 5. And of course, we still don't technically know that there's going to be an iPhone 5, but we started getting hints of uh, some major product transition in September. Oppen Oppenheimer said there's, quote, a lot going on this fall. Right, right. And he also apparently, I missed this during the call, but he also apparently hinted at um, new content deals for iTunes as far as video goes, which is kind of an interesting thing, especially where they keep playing with Apple TV as a hobby. Does that mean you could get an a la carte channel? Does that mean it's just going to be more movies? I said last on um, today's Mac OS Can. Oh, I hope it's Beatles movies. <laughs> that Merlin Man will be happy about that. <laughs> if it's that kind of interesting, then I'm going to, no offense to the liver puddling on the call. Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> it's just, I mean, it was, it was really, it was a really, I mean, just insanely good as far as as far as you know, money, as far as sales, and as far as all that stuff. But then, just the glimpse of of where they're going. There was one other thing that I found really fascinating, and I don't know if I'm if I'm looking for something about which to worry. Um, heavy, heavy emphasis on international. Yeah. And I don't I don't know if that has to do with just hey, look how good we're doing internationally, or if that has to do with okay, Wall Street's worried about how things are going economically here in the States right now. So let's also point out, yeah, the Fortune five hundred's doing great with this, but look at these global five hundred companies. And, well, but uh, I think that is important for Apple because Apple's never done well internationally. So that is yeah. that that is a victory. 
No, oh, no, I'm not. I mean, don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying that they were pulling some sort of uh, misdirection with that. It, right. it felt like a heavier emphasis than it's been in the past, although maybe it gets to be a heavier emphasis than it's been in the past because they're more successful now than they've been in the past. I mean, maybe that's all there is to it. An amazing $76.2 billion in cash. On yeah, they're going to they're gonna buy the moon. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what's really interesting is people, uh, in, uh, analysts have finally stopped because I guess it was about a year ago when they hit, what, 30-something billion, 40-something billion, that analysts were like, okay, it's, it's far too worrisome. They've got too much money. They're going to buy something stupid, like every hat company in the world or something like that. Um, and, now, and now they've got the like king seven... Of <laughs> you, could, uh, you could dominate the buggy whip industry! And now they've got seventy six billion dollars and nobody's asking that anymore. Is it because now they could spend thirty billion dollars on every hat company in the world and still have forty six billion dollars? At some point, I don't know. I mean, like I'm not I'm not an expert on uh, corporate governance or anything, but uh, you would think at some point there's pressure from people to do something with this. Maybe buy back stock at at the very least. Of course, they're stock at a record know. high right now. Maybe not, not not the time to buy it back. Who was it? Steve Jobs on the fourth quarter earnings call last year beat the tar out of somebody. I think it was Tony Sakanagi. I can't remember who from Bern, uh, Ber Bernstein. Um, he just, I mean, he was basically pushing him on that. What are you going to do with the money? Why don't you buy back shares? Why don't you do this? And Jobs was basically like, you're, you're thinking small. You don't get it. We've got ideas. <laughs> we <You> don't. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> well, what are they, okay, so they got a piggy bank. They're saving up for something. What the hell right. could it be at this point? Um, Exxon Mobil? Australia? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of money. Why, I, I guess the question I have, though, is, is it worrisome? I mean, what stupid things have they bought? I mean, I, don't, I still don't understand Lala. I don't okay, I mean, Lala, it was... It was a big deal when you compare it to the money in the bank. Right. Well, no, I mean, I understand buying Lala. I don't understand buying Lala to and shut it And not using down. it. Right. 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 But then, I mean, that was what? I mean, uh, Jobs walks around with that much money in his back pocket, what they spent on Lala, right? right. So, right. yeah. I, yeah. I don't know most of the about acquisitions. Yeah, sorry, Ken. Sure. Uh, most of the acquisitions no, have made have been fairly low key, haven't they? they? They don't really spend a ton of money on acquisitions. Well, but even the, that building is not going to cost. What's the building going to cost? $10 billion? I mean, it's not, even that's not. How much did they. What was the amount? Was it like, was it like a quarter of a billion dollars that they spent on. Um, what was the semiconductor company? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, PA Semi. PA, yeah, PA Semi, yeah. Yeah, uh, they spent like a quarter of a billion dollars on that, and that is now at the heart of the, uh, of the iPhone right. and the iPad right. and the iPod Touch, and everybody says buy. it'll eventually be the heart. Right? It's, it's an insanely good buy for a quarter of a billion dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, anyway, yeah, the money is crazy. How much is Sprint worth? <laughs> $7 mm. million. Dollars. <clears throat> really? They could buy Sprint and they'd still have $72 million, $72 billion <laughs> left. It's kind of a crazy idea. What would they do with, well, well yeah. Wouldn't, if you bought a, tel a, a, a wireless carrier right, and you stopped selling iPhones through all the others, you'd basically own the business, right? Isn't the That's iPhone the driving every, it'd be th them versus Android. That's sort of the same thing, though. I'm sorry, not to get way off track, but it's sort of the same thing as when everybody says Apple's going to get into a television television. I find it hard to believe because yeah, I think enough people way. have enough headaches right. making TVs, and I think Apple would just like it's to ride along exactly with that. Exactly what Andy's been saying all along. Yep. He's so why would, it, why would Apple want a wireless company? I mean, let, let AT&T and T-Mobile and, I'm sorry, AT&T and T-Mobile. I guess uh, Sprint, so. Because they're, uh, they're getting all the good stuff out of them they, without, right. yeah, without actually having to run the company. They're getting six hundred twenty-nine dollars for every iPhone. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like an okay thing. Oh, and, and and then when something goes wrong with the service, they'll call, call you. Call AT&T. <laughs> yeah. Don't call that us. Sounds good to me. Don't call right. us. Uh, what could they? What could they do? Well, I don't know. It's a. It is a fun thing to think about because it's so much money now. Yeah. I mean, it's not even as though they're investing it in R and D. I mean, the the R and D was just two percent, two point two percent, I think R and D. Uh, so you know, I mean, what are they putting in, in, in? Are they putting it in uh, CDs? I mean, what are they? What are they have, <laughs> they're investing it in. Uh, what, I mean, what are they doing with it? It's do, well, do you think it could actually? Uh, and uh, do you think it could actually be as simple? I read some article recently that said the reason that they're not spending their money, the reason they're not buying back shares, is because uh, Steve Jobs very well remembers when Apple was That's on right. the ropes, That's when right. they had almost no money. He doesn't want to have to go hat in hand to Microsoft again, and say, "Give me a hundred million, dude, because we're going to go bankrupt tomorrow." 
So, so is this like a depression era story, basically? <laughs> exactly. Or, you know, I remember when we couldn't, you know, <laughs> also, get also, also bread, remember back okay, then they, they didn't need the 150 million. <laughs> they didn't need Sick. it at the time. You mean? They, they, at the my recollection is my, my, my recollection is that at the time, if they could have gotten stockholder support, they could have bought themselves out. Uh, and oh, okay. Taken private, but the problem is with the current management, there is no way There's that no they're going to be a private company. They're just going to sell to somebody else. I, I, I saw. But, but, but your point is well taken. Mm -hmm. I mean, this, yeah. might be, that's, that's probably part of the cultural DNA to make sure that no one can ever push Apple around. Apple's in the business of pushing other people around. <laughs> All right, now we are going to take a break for uh, and then get back with our picks of the week in just a moment. Right now, I'd like to talk about our friends at Audible.com, the ultimate. Ken, are you an Audible uh, audiobook guy? You must be. Um, I, you know, I was when I had a commute, but now that I don't, uh, not quite as much. I'm a big fan. I've got, I mean, I've got some of their books that I listen to over and over again, especially the performance ones like uh, John Hodgman's The Areas of My oh, Expertise and yep. things like that. There's a new one. If you liked The Help, there's a new one by the uh, narrator who did The Help, which was such a classic called Pigeon English. See, I just love coming here. 75,000 titles. Uh, and it's just kind of in every category, fiction, nonfiction, classics, history. Uh, sci-fi, of course, a ton of sci-fi. Stuff for teens and little kids, too. It's just a great resource. And uh, we can get you a book free if you go to audible.com slash MacBreak. You'll sign up for the gold account. That's a book a month. And uh, your first month's free. You can cancel at any time. Keep that book forever. I, I'm, I'm with Ken on that. My library has 500 books. I've been a member since 2000. 11 years. And so I have so many books in here. And I can always go back and listen again, which is great. Andy, what do you? What have you uh, been listening to lately on Audible? Uh, my last download was uh, Sarah Vobel's latest book. Oh, I love her. Uh, and it's called Unfamiliar Fishes, and it's her the her the usual her usual like Sarah Vowell version of history. Look at uh, what happened to Hawaii and how they how they got uh, basically grabbed by the United States and gang pressed into becoming the 50th state. Uh, and all, all kinds of all, all the usual fun stuff that the uh, that uh, the United States does when they see an island of importance and says, you know what, we would like that. I think we'll have it. Wow, look at um, the narrator list on this. Yeah, that, that's 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 what I love about it. It's one of these great audio books where they just lots of great people come in just to do like little lines and little parts. John Hodgman is <laughs> it does have a role. Uh, Fred Farmerson, Bill Hader, uh, Catherine Keener, Edward Norton, Keanu Keanu Reeves. Whoa, uh, <laughs> whoa. Dude, does pineapple. he actually say "whoa" in the book at any point? <laughs> uh, not, not, not as far as I reached before. I'm only, about, I'm, I'm only about a third of the way through it at this point. But I'm looking for the. He uh, ought to. Unfamiliar so, fishes. Uh, so this is about Hawaii, or what is this about? It, it, it really is about the transition between uh, Hawaii being basically an independent, independent state, an independent uh, uh, kingdom, and the series of problems that that nation was suffering that basically played into the hands of uh, corporate interests that said, great, they've got all these resources, they've got all these exports, we can simply have these businesses just by sort of tell, telling them that we're going to come in, we're going to take over your government, and we're hmm. going to take care of all, because you clearly can't, can, can't take care of your own people, and you know, but, but we, the United States government will come in and we'll fix you all up, and it's really a sad story, but as Sarah Val has that way of saying these sort of things in a very matter-of-fact tone that neither minimizes it nor forces you to say, and now join hands around the drum circle. We will beat the drum once for every life lost <laughs> to American imperialism. <laughs> Do you, are you, now I like her voice. There are people who hate her voice. Uh, I presume yeah. since you're listening to it, you like it. It's, it's, it's a different voice. I mean, it's, but it really is. It's listen so to the sample. Evenly. And that's, by the way, one of the great things about audible.com is you can always listen to a sample of any book and uh, hear what it sounds like. They point out that these, all these narrators just do a line or two. They're doing yeah. the, the quotations. Yeah. It's mostly Sarah on this, right? I, I like her voice. It's unusual. Yeah, it's, 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 it's just that it's so evenly matched to her writing. It's hard to divor right. divorce her voice from what she writes. Yeah, so. you wouldn't want her to read War and Peace. Great Gatsby, maybe we'll go to Plan B. But for, for any Sarah Vowell book, you don't want anybody but Sarah Vowell reading it. Try it free. Audible.com slash Mac Break. You don't have to get the Sarah Vowell book. You, your choice of 75,000 titles, but this this would be a good one. I'm going to put it on my list. I always, you know, I love it, Andy, because you always recommend something I want to hear. By the way, my Mac has rebooted. So now an hour and 20 minutes later, took almost the whole show. I think I have. We'll see OS X Lion on this 17-inch. Uh, this is a pretty old one. 
I should have checked. <laughs> oh, no. As long as it's, as long as it's, it's Intel. Bit, it'll work. Yeah. It's 64 bit processor, you're good. Well, presumably the installer would, would say, no, you can't do this. Say so. Anything since about 2007. Yeah, this might be right at the edge there. Okay. In fact, I think I bought it, Ken, at the Mac World that we we did uh, that uh, Adam Adams thing. Mac. Okay. So what year was that? Two thousand seven. Um. Two thousand eight. I I think I. The one at Jillian's there because there were actually two. Yeah, Jillian's. The, the Apple Store. No, this is the one at Jillian's. <laughs> and I, okay, well then that was. I don't. Know, when was that? I may have problems with this. <laughs> I may regret <laughs> what I just did. All right. Well, we'll find out in a moment. It should have told. It sh it, I presume it would check. It's an easy thing to figure out if you're a I'm installer. I would have, I would have told yeah. you that. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. And I have just been handed this note that says, "Today is the day, the big bundle tie down from the control desk to the basement is now happening." I don't know what that means. We are. We. You know, this is the last MacBreak Weekly in the old Twit Cottage. You're saying goodbye to it now. Starting Sunday. We will be broadcasting from the new Twit Brickhouse Studios. We open on Sunday, and uh, the Mac Break Weekly the following Tuesday, by hook or by crook, will be from there. No more Skype either. We're going to use Videocast, which you guys will love. Um, it is not too late to buy a brick. Somebody said, "Oh, is it over now?" No, we, we haven't. Had, the first the shipment of bricks doesn't come for a couple of weeks actually, because they got to you know they laser cut them. But if you so if you want to be on our wall of honor, which is right on the wall when you first come in, you can have. The uh, regular size brick, the 8x4 with two lines of 15 characters each. We also have 8x8 bricks at a slightly higher fee, like a lot more. And you can even get your logo on there for if you're going to lay out the big bucks. And we have a commemorative, uh, you can get a commemorative brick as well that you can have in your own home to match the brick on the wall of honor. We'll get, I can't wait to, we'll have to do some sort of um, megapixel you know, 3D picture of it or something so people could visit at home, too, because it's just, it's going to be so cool. So uh, this is it. This is the last day. Bricks.twit.tv if you want to help us build this new Brick House studio. And uh, we thank everybody. Lots of people have donated. It's really, really a nice feeling. Let's get to our uh, picks of the week. I don't know, Ken, did they tell you that we do this? They did tell me that we do this. The problem is I don't buy anything. So. <laughs> is there anything you've got free lately that you like? Well, no, what I will say, well, I mean, oh, I got two ways I can go. I, can I reacquaint people with the idea of the uh, refurbished store? Yes, on, that's a great, uh, Apple because a great that's point. The computer that I'm using right now to talk to you was a uh, February 2011 MacBook Pro. So it was the ones that came out this year. And I got it through the refurb store, I think, in the middle of May before I even heard that it was there. I was just sort of cruising uh, through there one day to see what was what. And uh, it was definitely time for me to upgrade, and this was the machine I got. So I would encourage people to revisit that, even if it's not a new pick to you. Uh, otherwise, um, How do we get maybe there? I'll say Lion later tonight. <laughs> yeah, you don't know yet. <laughs> not uh, yet. If you go to what's uh, store.apple.com slash refurb, is that how you get there? I honestly don't know. It's down in the bottom uh, left-hand yeah, corner. Yeah, there's a link. So if and you scroll down or push up or whatever you do now with Lion. In most cases, yeah, scroll, push up, <laughs> scroll down, push up. In most cases, these are, uh, I believe, these are computers that were sold, opened, and returned immediately. So they can't be sold as new, but they are, in effect, new. And they're all right, late model. And great deals. I've got, I've got a family member who's still <laughs> using one of the now extinct uh, MacBook uh, Whites. Um, but he got it through the refurbished store as well, and it's it served him very well, except for the time that he poured a glass of water on it because he wanted to clean the uh, keyboard. Really? And how did that work for him? Um, well, <laughs> he paid a lot of money and got it re got something replaced. I don't know. Got all the way to the Genius Bar before he told us that. I was cleaning <laughs> got the, to the keyboard, genius bar and he was like, "Well, and it just stopped working uh, right after I spilled the water on it." And we're, really? <laughs> Because that might have been a good thing to tell us before we got here. We, would, we could have probably helped you. <laughs> yeah, or at the very least just known, you know, what we were in for once we got to the Genius Bar. Yeah, this happened. The howls much. of yeah. raucous laughter. Exactly. No, I think that's I'm a great pick, Ken. Feeds, or, Thank you. Or Twitter feed someplace, yeah. that genius. MacOSKen.com. And if you go tonight, what time do you start the uh, call-in show? 
Oh, golly. Uh, 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific, uh, other times in other parts of the planet. And um, we're sort of in transition right now. It was on Ustream, but now it's on Justin TV for like at least the next two weeks. So it's justin.tv slash macOSCan or follow me on Twitter, uh, twitter.com slash macOSCan, and I send out reminders. And uh, call in and, and we'll have cake. <laughs> <laughs> and you're just down the road a piece from here, right? No, I used to be. I'm very far away now. Well, you I'm moved in, away. Yeah, I'm in. I'm in uh, Buffalo, New York, actually. Oh now. dear. I would have. I would have come by the uh, cottage if yeah. I was still on the road, because you know I've never been, and now you guys are gonna. Was it gonna be like like a like a Benetton now? What are they turning the cottage yeah. into? Yeah, yeah, we're gonna turn it into a Benetton. <laughs> Sweet, that's 1985. <laughs> super. All the colors of Benetton, <laughs> Mister uh, Don McAllister. Your pick of the week, sir. Okay, well, I'll do two very quick ones. Don always um, has such good ones. Okay, well, the first one is a piece of hardware that was released today that we didn't really touch on, but I think it's worth mentioning. Uh, as, a, as an Apple uh, laptop user, I've always wanted a, a good laptop dock, uh, something that was very you know, fully functional, a minimal number of wires so I could connect my laptop. And they actually released one today, but surprise, surprise, it's actually a display. It's the Thunderbolt 27-inch display. Mm, this is pretty cool. In. It's really clever. Built into yeah. there, they've got um, they've got a FaceTime camera, the HD camera, they've got high quality audio, three USB 2 ports, a FireWire 800 port, surprisingly a gigabit Ethernet port as well, and this uh, Thunderbolt port, so you can daisy chain it. So basically, you can connect, you can take uh, the MagSafe connector from your display, plug that into your laptop, a single Thunderbolt connector, and then all those other things are, are then fully enabled. So you've got uh, this. Uh, uh, gigabit Ethernet and all sorts at the back of your display. So I think that's a really uh, clever idea and a, a neat way that they've actually done it. It's quite expensive. It's uh, like $999. Well, that's, but that's the same as the 27 before. So, yeah. so yeah. they didn't raise the price. All this functionality. So I think that's uh, a really neat solution. So that's uh, one end of the scale. The other one is just a, a nice simple piece of software. Um, I'm really into Markdown, which is this text markup language. Uh, I use several different bits of... Uh, 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 and the nice thing with Markdown is you can create uh, formatted documents just using basic text editors. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, some text editors do have uh, sort of Markdown support built in, others don't. But there's this great new app called Marked by uh, Brett Terpstra on the Mac App Store, which basically gives you an independent preview of any Markdown documents that you're working on. So um, it's really clever how it works. It's, it's an application. You basically start working on a text document in any text editor. And then if you want to see a preview of it, if you've used Markdown formatting language, you just drag it onto the marked application. And then every time that you save your document, it actually changes, it, it reformats the display so you can actually see uh, you know, how your Markdown is actually looking as you go along. So it means you're no longer limited to text editors that just have Markdown support. You can basically use any text editor and uh, get this uh, ongoing preview as you, as you work through your document. And it has some other extra features, such as being able to copy in, uh, the HTML out and some other things as well. But it's really neat. Very, very simple. Very, uh, very classy idea. This is great. I, I like Markdown a lot. I use it a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. John, John Gruber wrote That's that. That's right. Yeah, John, John uh, and someone else, I think, put uh, Markdown together. But there's tons and tons, and especially on the iPad, there's an awful lot of uh, Markdown apps. But on the Mac, not so many. I use one called Byword, which is really good. But if you're just using text edit or something and you want to see what it looks like, in Markdown, once you put the formatting on, just get this marked application, drag your file onto there, and every time you save it, it just refreshes, and you can get it so that it sort of stays above the page, so you can always see it. It's a really neat idea. Marked. Yeah, from markedapp.com. Actually, it's on the App Store at two ninety nine. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Last but not least, Mr. Andy Notko, and in your pick of the week. Uh, I'm a bit late to the party, but I, well, I'll, I'll save Lion as your pick of the week. Thank but... you, because I am ready to show it. There you go. <laughs> um, I started messing around with, uh, obviously, uh, everyone knows how uh, much scorn, ridicule, and abuse the Final Cut X uh, has been receiving. Uh, but I think that's sort of uh, overlooked the fact that they broke out a couple of really cool things that used to be part of Final Cut and made them separate, really cheap, really affordable things. And so I've been playing with Motion, which cost 49 bucks, and it's their uh, video canvas video making tool where uh, if you if this if, if you want if there's a if there's a picture that you took during vacation of like a of a uh, uh, of, of a tank in front of a uh, in front of a, uh, a vfw uh, hall and you want to animate like a missile coming out of the cannon and then blowing something up uh, at the beach party you were at 
you can do that in motion. If you just have a situation where, gosh, I just I'm doing an iMovie thing, but I need this one scene. I need someone to be on screen talking about a video that's also inset inside that frame as it's playing. That's something that you can do. That's a, that's a clip that you can easily do with motion. Basically, anything that involves like Photoshop only with movies and moving elements uh, on a canvas with the assistance of software that can simply say, look, I want you to put this missile right here. I want you to animate it flying from here to here. Do motion blur, have it spinning as it goes. Just do that for me. Thank you very much. Uh, motion can handle that. Now, it's not. It's designed to integrate really well with Final Cut, but you can use it really well with iMovie. All you have to do is if you have that one shot in which you want the missile to be flying over someone's head while they're talking, to you, while the while the your cousin is you know exchanging wedding vows with number number eight or number nine, uh, all you have to do is take that one little clip out of your iMovie, export it as an MP4 or export it as a video clip. Put it into motion, do that animation, export that back again. Now you have that's the, the the missile superimposed over that, that guy's head for that one clip. Then put it back into iMovie. You can't see the cut lines where this thing got exported and put back in. As far as anybody knows, you did this all with an iMovie. And for a $49 app, that's a really cool thing. It's a really cool toy to play with. I agree. By the way, now uh, an hour and 25 minutes in, but uh, it, it did, in fact, preserve my settings, and I like the new login screen. I hadn't seen this uh, before. Um, I like the, I like the linen. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's it, everywhere, it, it, isn't it's, it? It's, 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 sort of, it's sort of like the, the curtain that you look at before the show starts. Yeah, that's what it is. That's what it is. And I, I don't know if that was my... I think the lion... Was that my, uh, my picture before, or did they just decide I deserve to be a lion because my name's Leo... Um, my pick, actually, uh, I haven't tried yet, but something that just came out today, and I wanted to point you to it. We've talked before about, and I love, the Sonos 5, uh, the, the Zone Player. Um, it is a great way to get music in every room. It works really nicely with the iPhone, and they have an iPhone dock you can buy. It has its own low-latency network that doesn't sit on top of your Wi-Fi, which I like. Uh, it works with Mog, with Rhapsody, with RDO, and with Spotify. And the only negative has been it's really expensive, three ninety nine dollars for the um, Zone Player 5. Now they've got a less expensive three-speaker, not five-speaker, but three-speaker system, the Play 3. And they've actually rebranded everything, so there's the Play 5, the Play 3. It's two ninety nine, dollars uh, And I really think if you're looking at a way to add music... Uh, to your house, and you'd like different music in each room, you'd like it to work with your iTunes, you'd like it to work uh, with uh, these on-air services, internet radio too. I love the Sonos, and I'm glad that they now have a, a $299 uh, entry-level Sonos. Can't recommend it more highly. We actually got uh, five, no, six Sonos devices for the uh, the new studio so that we can lis listen to the twit in all the offices and so forth. Booting up. I think I'm. Uh, I think I'm good. I think I'm good. The setup assistant is running. I guess it's going to ask me some stuff, but uh, I didn't. Doesn't look like I lost anything anyway. Um, so uh, there you go. It took a whole Mac break weekly, but I got Lion installed. <laughs> Andy oh, and I. Glad we're able to keep you company during this time, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> I had, I had I, to do I, something. I, I had to go out and pick up my dry cleaning. I, uh... <laughs> Andy Anako is writing for the Chicago Sun-Times, and uh, you should keep doing that because we look forward to your review of Line, which will be out, you think, today or tomorrow? Uh, I think my editor is going to get it in about a half an hour, which means it will probably be on the Sun-Times around dinner time, I think. Excellent. Chicago Sun-Times, of course, the celestial waste of bandwidth to www.cwob.com and a regular on Mac Break Weekly. Thank you so much for being here, Andy. I really appreciate it. We also thank our good friend Don McAllister, who is a semi-regular but always available when we call upon him. He's just the greatest, and Screencasts Online is the place to go to get great screencasts that teach you how to uh, use almost all kinds of Mac software. I mean, it's just go there. There's free stuff as well as uh, paid uh, mm -hmm. The subscription is well worth it. And do you still have that deal? Yes, you can get a 50% discount on the joining fee, uh, which is like three months' worth of shows plus access to the... Uh, there's an archive now about 300 shows that I've wow. done, so you get immediate access to that. So you just use the coupon code MACBREAKWEEKLY. Very good. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Ken Ray is Mac OS Ken. He's been covering the Mac for uh, as long as I've known him. It's a decade, yeah? 
Oh, well, I was doing tech stuff at, you know, tech TV because that's what we did. But um, I've been doing uh, Apple. Um, but you know, it's seven years since years. since it's been seven years since tech TV went away, Ken. Yeah. <laughs> I don't well, want to rub it in or anything. <laughs> well, no. And I left tech TV 11 years ago. Right. Actually, so so I'm wondering it, if you've I've been doing really it since then. I've really got to stop trading on that. <laughs> <laughs> no. Can I? Can I haven't I really... stopped. <laughs> <laughs> what are you, what are you nuts? Funny. Um, can I mention one thing really quickly? Because we kept do. talking about the live show. Uh, Mac OS Ken is a daily Apple news podcast. So if, if you want to start your day with as much Apple news as I could find the night before, um, do that. There are some days when you must really have to work hard. And then there are other days like today when you wonder why there aren't more hours in the day. Yeah, I, I, I killed a ton of stories, actually, for today. So they'll turn up on tomorrow's show, and who knows what will be on Friday. But uh, That's what I would do. Stretch it out. <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> MacOSKen.com. It's great to talk to you again, Ken. Thank you very Thanks much, for Leo. Us. Thank you all for joining us. We do Mac Break Weekly. When, uh, normally, we do it Tuesdays. We do it today because uh, we wanted to make sure we could cover the big announcements we knew would be happening today. But we'll be back next Tuesday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, at live.twit.tv from the new Brickhouse Studios. So everything will look different and beautiful and odd. Um, we, but the show will still be as crappy as always. Uh, you can, if you miss that, you can always watch it. And by the way, we will now have 720p HD downloads because everything's HD in the new studio uh, from uh, twit.tv slash mbw or on iTunes or anywhere else you get podcasts. Mac Break Weekly. Just search for that. Thank you all for being here. We'll see you next time. Now get back to work. Break time's over.